We're coming off of our best season yet, going 9-4, and four, and we have a real shot of winning the MAC Conference, but that would require freshman quarterback Pat Smith to step up. Our stadium is also under construction, adding a ton of seats, so that'll be done by next year, and we're able to recruit players greater than 3 stars now, but after reading some comments from you all, I've decided that we can only go after 4 and 5 stars from our pipeline states, which right now is only Michigan and Ohio. I've also built this database so we have a clean look at our updated roster, so if you were wondering who some of the starters were, this should help, and I'm ready to see our season 6 projections. It is shocking to me that we are supposed to win the MAC, but it makes sense when we have a player like Demarcus Perkins, who went for 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns last year, but after this season, he's graduating alongside halfback Ryan Wilson, so I'd like to find some recruits to replace them, even if our team overview says all we need is a kicker and a free safety. These seven players are going to be the top targets for Grand Rapids this year, with 98-speed Zach Wilson being the main focus. He reminds me of Ben Fowler, but we'd have him for four years, and I'd probably Probably play him at halfback since we're also targeting Justin Stevenson, who is a Juco but would most likely see the field for us immediately. And for the defensive side of things, there's athlete Jordan Williams, cornerback Michael Hill, Grant Sanders, Jay Green at linebacker, and Dion Hughes as well. It would obviously be amazing if we got all of those guys, but our main focus for this video, where we play through the entire season in one video, is going to be taking advantage of this schedule and winning the MAC for the first time. Last year we got the Michigan MAC trophy because of a tiebreaker, but this year I want to take a step forward, and this first matchup isn't a MAC game but I think we'll get off to a good start against an FCS school. And I can already tell when it comes to landing some of these players, there's going to be some tight battles. All right, it's time to see the freshman quarterback play for the first time. And I'm very happy with our offense going into this year, but our defense is definitely better with cornerback being our most questionable position. It is time to start season seven. And I'm so excited to see what this team can do, but I'm also pumped up to see what our stadium looks like next year. They're already getting seven yards. And here on second and two, we figured they'd go with the run, but they're still going to pick this up. Even though Northern Iowa was an FCS school, there's always the chance that they could give us some issues. And I'm just glad this is how our season's starting instead of against a super tough opponent. But Brad Jones just stopped their quarterback from running and on third and five, our coverage isn't good. We were able to run a lot of man-to-man -man last year, but we lost some players. And I'm afraid that could affect us defensively this season, but we'll see. Joel Johnson's already racking up a sack and he's been the best defensive player in school history for us. On third and 10, we're gonna get another one. We also forced the ball out, but unfortunately they recovered it. And once again, the difference is Joel Johnson who came in and laid the hammer there. Since Ryan Wilson is a senior and he is still not our starting running back, I have him back on returns to see if he can do anything for us this year, and he is not going to be bad at all. Look at this already. But there's the real face of our offense coming out, and we are going to feed him, especially with a freshman quarterback at the helm. Now, the cool thing about having Pat Smith is we can also have some design quarterback runs, and the reason he's starting over junior Brian Johnson doesn't have to do with age. It does help that he's two years younger, but his rushing stats are just so much better. And we're about to see what we can pull off with his first pass, where it is on the money to Clemens. Redshirt senior Thomas Clemens has been on this team for five years, but he's just now getting an opportunity, and the option is working to perfection, going to Demarcus Perkins, and it makes me so excited for this season that we can run it like this. Pat Smith scores his first touchdown for Grand Rapids, and look, I'm remembering to kick the extra points this year, but what a start that was from our offense, and we are all over that run, and they're still breaking tackles. Justin Barnes is a good running back, especially at the FCS level, and he might have moved the chains for them, but they still have a long way to go, and that is another break away run. Okay, this is not good. If Northern Iowa can do this to us, imagine what some other schools are going to do. And I've remembered to put a quarterback spy out there on second and three where we get the sack with Joel Johnson. He is literally the best player ever. And the game saying he already has three sacks. That is insane. It is only the start of the second quarter where they went with the run and they're not picking up that third and 10 that way. So we're set up to have a great start and Demarcus Perkins takes this handoff for a few. Right now he's averaging like eight yards per carry. So obviously we're going to continue to feed him, but it is third and short and we're going to let Pat Smith try and throw the ball. He has the slant open and that was such an inaccurate pass from the freshman. This is exactly why I'm glad we opened up against an FCS school, but that's a growing pain that we might suffer through all year. And I have to be more careful because we no longer have Ryan Pace who had 86 throw accuracy, but even he struggled until his senior season because of the sliders that we're using and Joel Johnson didn't give him enough time. I don't know what our defense would do if we didn't have somebody like him on it. And they're going to attempt this long field goal where their kicker is a bit short. That was a good effort, but it was also a lot to expect out of an FCS kicker. And if you can't already tell, our strategy is run, run, pass, where I think we've gotten the first. But the ref spotted Perkins short, so we're going to hand it off here, and that'll do it. I have no issues with doing this because I know we're going to get the looks that we're hoping for. And we've built up an offensive line that can actually win some of these blocks, which is super nice. We're back to letting the freshman throw the ball here on third and two, and he has Ryan Wilson in the flat. So thankfully, that ball wasn't off target, and they were all over the option. We've got to make sure that he gets comfortable throwing at some point, but their man-to-man -man coverage clamped up, and it's probably not even 
even worth it to try and force something on this third and 26. So we're just going to dump it off inbounds to Perkins, but he couldn't hold on to the ball. And it's time to see what new punter Juco Robert Smith can do for us. He's only a sophomore and we got him over Michigan State, but we've seen better on first and 10 Northern Iowa was throwing the ball. So they're going to try and score before the half, or at least I thought they were. They just ran down the clock and this is going to be one of the final plays where they got tripped up. Sweet. We're going to end the second quarter with a lead and we might as well open this drive up with a handoff to DeMarcus Perkins, who sees that he might be able to get that outer edge and this is going to go for his biggest game. That's how to start the second half and we're hitting him with a wide receiver screen where Alan Brown just made back-to-back -back amazing blocks, which sets this up for Thomas Clemens to go to their red zone. Let's just say that the sophomore tight end's effort is not going to go unnoticed here. This was an incredible play from him and we're flying down the field right now, but Demarcus Perkins is going to get locked up. This time we'll give Pat Smith the option to keep the ball and that's what he did as he is going to evade the defense. Can he get around all of them? Maybe not, but he almost was able to. And the freshman has got to have a bright future for us. Ryan Wilson takes this one, but now we're going to try a quarterback designed run and those were some decent blocks, but not good enough making it third and three where the halfback toss to the outside is going to work to Perkins. Demarcus Perkins just got his first touchdown of the season and we'll see if Northern Iowa was able to respond, but they've shown us nothing so far, which is what I was hoping for since this is our first game of the season. And there is no way that Joel Johnson just picked up his fourth sack of the game, which is a school record. We are witnessing the best defensive performance ever in school history. And I'm starting to think that this could be our first shutout ever as well. Ryan Wilson's going to try and get a good return here. Hopefully there's no clipping penalties with this. And so far we have dominated, but there's still a decent amount of time left. So I don't want to get too cocky. I should not have gotten tripped up with Demarcus Perkins there. That's going to hurt because we might have been able to have a house call and we're going to find our sophomore tight end for his first catch of the year. Alan Brown was recruited as a fullback, but we moved him over to tight end and redshirted him for a season. Look at Demarcus Perkins getting another big run on this defense going to the three, and we'll see if he can finish off this drive where they stack the box and it's still not going to matter, but he fumbled it in the end zone. Are you kidding me? Okay, we should just challenge that to see if he got over the line first, but it says challenge the spot of the ball, and it's probably because he dropped it a yard short of the end zone. Sometimes I wonder if Grand Rapids is ever allowed to have anything nice on first and 10. We could get our first interception, but even if we didn't, that was great defense. And junior cornerback Jamal Davis has had some rough moments in his career, but we love seeing our guys develop. And on third and seven, we could get another sack, but they just got it out in time for the first. It's disgusting that Northern Iowa still has a chance in this game against us, but that's why I said we can't get cocky and great defense from Joel Johnson. They probably won't give him player of the game, but I believe that he deserves it. No way they pick this up. And that's a great way to end the third quarter because now we have the ball back again and we can go back to running the ball with DeMar Marcus Perkins, who just got multiple great blocks there. He had one guy to beat, but even if he didn't, he has broken a school record of some sort and it is rushing yards in a career. It took Ben Fowler two years to put up those numbers and it's only taken him 14 games for us. This is going to be another good one, but I want to start developing Pat Smith's arm since he had that inaccurate throw and that one looked a lot better over to tight end Allen Brown for the touchdown. I need our freshman quarterback to get his confidence back and we got some cheerleaders doing push-ups, so I'm not sure how I feel about us stunting on an FCS school, but I guess I'll take it. At least we're having success. And there was a comment on the last video that said David Conception can't play corner, but the juniors are only viable option at that position. And if you're confused why the overalls are different from this screen, it's because those don't factor in the coordinator boost that you get in game. Hester's trying to run for the first down, but Drew Flynn was all over it. Third and five, halfback draw. Is that going to work now? Like you'd expect, they're going to go for it on fourth and two because this is their last chance. But we were ready for the run and our defense is so close to getting their first shutout in school history. This is the picture perfect way I could have imagined us starting our season. Demarcus Perkins gets another 10 and he's about to casually go for 200 yards. It sure does not feel like it. He just needed to get a better block on that one, but it didn't happen. And now we're going to let Pat Smith throw it where he finds our other tight end Jones underneath, which sets up this third and two. We're going to go with the halfback toss and they were all over it. I guess we'll take our field goal going up by 24, but they're going to have one more chance to score a touchdown on us. And they're going for a deep shot already, which was actually reeled in by Josh Owen. So that's not a great start, but he's going nowhere here. And we should probably stick with man-to-man -man coverage for the rest of this. They're going for another one and we are all over it, but they catch it. Are you serious? Josh Owens just came away with another one and that guy might be the reason that we don't get our first shutout in school history. I don't care that we've already won this game. I just want to make sure that they don't score and Matt Small was so close to having that in his hands. I'm not letting this drag it open underneath, but that tight end is. I'm so frustrated with Northern Illinois. I mean Northern Iowa right now and they're going to get the two-pointer. So they're going for the comeback and we are going to seal it by recovering the onside kick instead. It's going to end with a QB kneel and freshman quarterback Pat Smith starts his career with a win but Joel Johnson won player of the game and that's so rare to see a defensive player do but he deserved it. I know Pat Smith was only six for eight but we leaned on Demarcus Perkins because he was having a great performance 
and we're going to need it again next week at Michigan State. What's crazy is they lost their first game to Central Michigan, so going into this one, we're favored, but they're still a higher overall on paper, and some of these team overalls from our MAC opponents scare me. For now, though, we're worried about Dallas Hicks, because I swear, he always gives us so many issues, and we're also an hour down the road at Spartan Stadium. Starting out with the ball, you know that we're handing this one off to Demarcus Perkins, and it is crucial that we're able to establish the run early. Pat Smith sees the open lane on the field, and that was a 20-yard rush from our quarterback, which is what you want out of him. Demarcus Perkins gets at least 13, and our rushing attack is going so well, we're also going to mix in this wide receiver one where Thomas Clemens got blown up. Might as well switch it up and pass on second and 12, where we had somebody open, but I tried to evade the pocket to throw to the slant, and they're going to pick it up. And looking back on it, this should have been an instant throw from Pat Smith. Nothing ever goes our way versus Michigan State, so I can't act like I'm surprised. We'll see what their sophomore quarterback can do against us, though, and that is going to go for nine. I'm pretty sure we haven't had to face off against Joseph Flowers before, but that's another completion. And I'm just preparing for them to hand it off to Dallas Hicks, but they're not doing that yet. This could be intercepted, and it blows my mind that David Conception wasn't able to reel this one in. I'm telling you, against Michigan State, nothing ever goes our way. But at least Dallas Hicks has forced them to a third and 12 where we are all over it. Of course, it was Joel Johnson that was able to get the sack, and that has caused the Spartans to punt us the ball, where it was almost out at the one, but we got it at the 20. And they are selling out to stop Demarcus Perkins, so we're going to pass, but our offensive line collapsed. We had to get it out very quick. And Randy Harris has let stuff like this happen to him throughout his career. They get instant pressure, but it's all good. We have a curl route over to Dante Moss, who gets his first catch of the year. And it's a shame that we haven't used him more, but our rushing attack is what gets us going, and Demarcus Perkins gets seven. Backup Ryan Wilson is in on second and three, but he should still be able to pick this one up. And I don't like running it three straight times, but I feel like we have no choice. Pat Smith looks good right here. So we could still be the first team to get onto the board, and this halfback toss got blown up. Our issue against the Spartans last year was they were able to stop the run, and it seems to be the same thing this season. Dante Moss is going to come away with that ball, though. And I feel like this has to be four down territory. Ryan Wilson goes nowhere, but it sets up a hard decision to make because it's fourth and four. We lost a yard, and I feel like we're going to get a stop, so I'm going to pin them back inside the five, which is a move I don't think we'll regret. We're shooting that gap. And there were a lot of comments on the last video saying don't play as aggressive, especially when it comes to two-point conversions. So I have heard you all out, and on this third and eight, I hope they're not able to pick this up. We just got to make the tackle. There we go. That is why you play the field positioning battle because we're getting this back at midfield and Ryan Wilson could get even more yards with the return. He just spun multiple players out and Demarcus Perkins is going to take this one where that block got shedded, but it doesn't matter because he's just too good. I swear that he can get out of any situation. We also got some nice ones on this play, but the back juke wasn't a great idea. We're going with the triple option where he's going to catch this pitch and get a few more, making this a third and manageable where we have our flat and Brown is going to run backwards, but somehow they're saying he got to the marker, so we're just going to quickly hike it. And with a fresh set of downs, we're going to do our best to reach the end zone on Michigan State, but we need to keep our drive alive, and Ryan Wilson will do that for us. We have seven first downs to their one, so we have dominated. Anderson's actually in the game, and Fred Anderson's our third stringer, but he could start for us next year, so we need to get him experience, and that was not the play call for that. Michigan State was all over from the jump. We'll see if their man-to-man -man coverage can stick here, though, and setting Thomas Clemens in motion for that play was an amazing idea. I am very happy with how this first half has gone so far. Joel Johnson gets another sack, and he has a chance to break some national records this season if he can keep it up. Third and eight. I'm just going to drop back into coverage. We have the curl route all covered and they are going down. So it's nice to finally have a defensive unit that can cover and we took a timeout so we'd get the ball back with about a minute left in the half and I'm hoping that we're able to take advantage of it. Dante Moss creates a load of separation with the corner route and he's going to get us to the 24. That was so quick that we have time to hand it off to Ryan Wilson. I thought it would be Demarcus Perkins, but it's all right. And here on second and six, we have our drag open underneath the Thomas Clemens, but he gets stopped. So we're going to mix in our first halfback screen of the season and Ryan Wilson is still in the game so that's a little bit concerning but we'll check up on Demarcus Perkins at halftime and tight end Allen Brown gets us to the two. We just have to finish this drive off and that drag is going to be caught by Jeff Shelby so the freshman wide receiver scores his first touchdown for Grand Rapids and we're playing Michigan State better than ever before. I know they're only a 79 overall but I feel like we're starting to actually improve because it used to take us like three attempts to make a tackle and even with the hardest sliders in the game we've started to crack them but I should probably shut up. The second that I say we're starting to have success, you know that Dallas Hicks is going to go off. He just threw our defender off of him to get more, and I'm ready to shoot this run gap with Matt Small, which is going to lock up their backup. Defense wins championships, and I believe that we have a really solid one with this unit out on the field right now, but we will see how it goes as the season goes on. Steven Anderson is not going to bring down Dallas Hicks, and these are the type of drives that we are used to Michigan State having that halfback angle route fooled me. So now they're at our 22. That's going to be a corner route, so we are all over it, but apparently they had one on the other side of the field as well. And the Spartans are very much alive here in the third quarter, where it's
it turns out that Demarcus Perkins is out for two weeks, so hopefully that sprained ankle doesn't ruin all of the current momentum that we have. And Ryan Wilson is decent, but he's definitely not as good, so we might have to lean on the arm of Pat Smith, which we haven't gotten a great look at yet. And I'm going with the halfback screen, which is going to be open, but he missed the throw. Up until that point, he was 11 for 11, but apparently the pressure of a simple dump off got to him, and we'll see if our sophomore punter can pin them back. This ball bounced right where it needed to, inside the 10-yard line. So I've been happy with Robert Smith so far. Dallas Hicks is going to take this one and break one tackle. And it looks like on their next play, they tried to hit us with a jet sweep, but we're ready. The defense that's out there on the field is set up to stop the run, but the play action could have burnt us. And on third and 13, Joel Johnson's got like four guys blocking him, so he wasn't able to get pressure in. It looks like the Spartans think they can run, but Dallas Hicks just got clotheslined, and we needed to do it again on this play instead of giving him a speed boost. Third and short. I did not think they'd go back to it again, but that's going to move the chains for Michigan State. And we're collapsing on all sides of the ball after having such a good start. They've just gashed us over and over, and that's going to be no different on this one. So I guess they can run the ball on us, and thankfully they are attempting a pass. I feel much more confident about us stopping them, but their quarterback takes off, and Joseph Flowers was fast enough to reach the end zone. It's all tied up at 14, and it happened so fast. Ryan Wilson is going to get some great blocks here with the kickoff. He was able to avoid that tackle, and I don't know if he has the speed to take it all the way to the house, but he's going to get pretty close. So shout out to him for flipping the fields, and we have our third string running back in the game, Fred Anderson, who looks slow. But if that was Demarcus Perkins, it would have been a touchdown. And that's why it's so crucial we pick up some good recruits this season. Our tight end catches it. And I think our best option is to simply throw the ball. That's going to be a laser to Allen Brown. But he was not able to hang on. So we'll see how this wide receiver screen does. Thomas Clemens catches it, but goes nowhere. Third and goal. And sometimes with this play, they don't stick with Ryan Wilson. But they did in this situation, and it swatted down. But we shouldn't have even tried to force it in there. We'll take our three. And let's hope that our defense can get their first stop in a while. That should have been a sack from Joel Johnson. But it's going to almost be picked. And David Conception had that in his hands. I don't know how their quarterback was able to throw Joel Johnson off of him like that because he's got away at least 75 pounds less than him, but it is all good. We just need to hold them and come on. It's hard to stay positive when we've watched our defense collapse, but the ball is loose and they are going to pick it up. That was so close to being a turnover. We had like five guys over there, but it isn't going to matter. And on that side of the field, we are going to see Jamal Davis get toasted by 83. So Richard Harris reaches the end zone, putting his team up four. And it's not ideal for Pat Smith to have to have a legacy drive against the Spartans, but we'll see what he's able to do. Ideally, I'd like to keep it on the ground for as long as possible because that's what we do best. That's a solid spin move, and his elusiveness alone is the reason to have him over Brian Johnson, but I was worried about pitching it there and fumbling, and they have defenders all over him. I'm not 100% sure we can trust his arm, but we also don't have a choice. Jeff Shelby is going to be able to get the first down for us, and if Ryan Wilson wants to have a breakaway run, I would greatly appreciate it, but they're all over him. I wish we didn't have to get a touchdown because Myron Cooper is a strong leg and we're near field goal range, but we have to go all the way, and Pat Smith is going to keep this one where he found the hole and got the first down. This is the same situation we were in last year against the Spartans at the end, but after passing for a touchdown, it got called back because of a holding penalty, and that can't happen again. My hope is they're in man-to-man -man coverage, and Dante Moss can get open, but they're not, so we're just going to go underneath our backup tight end, and he fumbled it away. Are you kidding? Moss picks it up, and I think Dante Moss just saved the day, so I've let myself calm down before handing this one off, but we're going to have to take a timeout because I made sure to run the clock down, and we got him with the play action. We have an open player, but it's dropped again. It is coming down to a fourth down play call. And originally I wanted to pass, but that middle lane is wide open. I think we could hit this with Ryan Wilson and he gets it. That was the most stressful ending we have had yet. But I think we're going to escape with a win. And I know you all saw the game. Try and cheat us out of the ending. They're hitting Dallas Hicks. There's only a few seconds remaining. That is going to do it. So we have finally beaten the Michigan State Spartans and our fans are ecstatic. We were able to do it without Demarcus Perkins as well. So I'm extremely proud of true freshman Pat Smith. He had a good stat line. Everyone else kind of struggled, but it's all right. Going into our next week, everybody's ready for a visit, but our first home game isn't until week five, so they won't be able to come in for a visit until we take on Ohio. But I'm starting to feel more confident about this class because even though all four of those battles are tight, you're going to see that we've taken some big leads on some of the better players. And I've also added Michael Daughtery to the board, who's a 71 overall athlete that can play defense. And I might as well mention kicker Aaron Adams. It's so nice that we have coach points with Andrew Luck to put into game management stuff. And if you were curious about some of our coordinator boosts, I'll go through them really quick. They just help out our offense a ton, and there's a quick scroll. When it comes to playing, though, next up is Ball State, and I'm ready to open up Matt Conference play with a win, even if we won't have Demarcus Perkins, because we are much better than them on paper, and two of their best three players are on their special teams unit. I hate to go into a game with expectations, but if we lose this one, I'm going to be very upset, and hopefully all of this rain does not hurt us. Ryan Wilson is going to take his first handoff for the day for about a 15-yard gain, and he already looks better than he did versus the Spartans, but the main player who had success running was Pat 
Matt Smith, who's going to take this one, juke out that defender, and also get a great block, so he is going to get a huge gain all the way to the 20. Having somebody like him makes our life so much better. The wide receiver screen didn't work, though, and we're honestly lucky that they didn't pick that off, but the drive must go on, and Ryan Wilson is going to spin that defender out and also get around all of those defenders. What a run from him. It looked like he was going to get stopped in the backfield, but he makes for a good backup, and that's the first extra point I've seen. Literally, the first one I do is already a miss from our senior kicker, and I've apparently not learned my lesson. On this first and 10, Matt Ferguson had way too much time, so Ball State looks like they want to compete, and they pitched that out. Jamal Davis is going to make the tackle, though, and I did not trust the junior cornerback to do that, but I'm very proud of him. We should have gotten the pick with David Concepcion there, but he didn't, and instead, Chris Baker takes it to the house to get a lead. It should be tied, but it's not the end of the world on this first down. They boxed up the few routes I was looking at, but Pat Smith is able to escape the pocket, and what a run from our QB. He is averaging over 30 yards per carry right now, and Ryan Wilson's going to take this one for a nice seven, which just shows that our offense is alive right now. Fred Anderson took this handoff, but he's all right. And depending on how we do in recruiting, we'll see if we use the freshman a lot next year. That's going to get thrown away. And we've got to get Pat Smith warmed up when it comes to passing. We got some good blocks on the halfback screen, which helped, but it's still third down, and they are not going to be able to stop our quarterback run with him. He only has like 83 speed, so I wasn't expecting this, but I got to say the future should be bright with him and Dante Moss was able to get some separation. However, Pat Smith is holding his knee and Brian Johnson is out there on the field. The junior handed it off, but it is fourth and inches and I'm letting him sneak this up the middle, which actually panned out nicely. We have an option to put Pat Smith back in the game and I don't know if this was the right move, but we did it. He's going to run it in for the touchdown and then get a chance to rest and I don't think it would be smart to chase points yet because our offense has looked pretty much flawless and with the RPO, Andre Williams is going to go for like 20. He's evidently the guy that we need to focus in on stopping today, and it's a good thing that Banks doesn't look very quick, but he moved the chains to end the quarter, and to start the second, they're going to keep it with their quarterback where Matt Ferguson gets blown up, and whoa. I don't know what Goodwin just did to him, but I hope it throws him off of his game, and why is that guy wide open? Third and one. Go ahead. Hand it off. We're ready to shoot that gap, but I guess they didn't want to do it. Steven Anderson is going to sit on that ball, and Davis gets the interception. That is the first one of the year, so shout out to junior corner Jamal Davis, and we should probably be handing it off inside the five to Ryan Wilson. I don't want to risk the chance of taking a safety and we've had success running the ball, but now it's third and five, so we need to do something different and I'm going over in the flat to him. Hopefully he's able to make it to the marker, but I probably should have taken one of those hitch routes. But when I looked in their direction, it seemed like they were a little too tightly guarded. I didn't feel comfortable throwing it and it's better that we don't turn the ball over. Good bounce on the punt as well. It gets them back to the 25 until they picked it up and took it to around midfield and we did not set up our defense for success. Even though there are 68 overall, they're competing very well. And as we get better, that's the scary thing about this game because sometimes overall just doesn't matter because stuff like that's going to go in their favor. On third and 10, I'm trying to get in with Joel Johnson. We are almost going to pick it. And that is freshman strong safety Kyle Stevens, who might not have held on, but did they just go with a fake punt on fourth and 10? And there is no way that this works for them. Let's go ahead and sack them. This is the first time that something like that's happened in the series. And what a terrible play call for Ball State. They just set themselves up to lose this game. We have to make sure that this is the final drive of the first half. Pat Smith gets like seven and Chu clock is turned on for a little bit because we are just trying to get through all of it. Now the third down read is our tight end up the middle, which is open. He is going to catch it to the two and Pat Smith deserves to just take it in where he is going to not make it. It should be fine because he'll get it here, but we had to work to score 20 points and we did a good job of leaving no time on the clock, but they're opening up the third quarter with the ball. So we will see what they can do with it. I am ready to guard them with man-to-man -man coverage and that should have been intercepted. Jamal Davis is sticking to them like glue. So I guess it doesn't matter that he's a 70 overall. Drew Flynn's going to struggle to take down the running back and they're going to go back to him on this play, which gets five. Anthony Hunt is averaging seven yards a carry, but he's only touched it six times and we are going to give up the drag to Baker, unfortunately. So I was hoping to put it away, but their quarterback just hurtled on us and pitched it last second to help get extra yardage. And I don't know why he jumped like that, but I guess it's working for them. That corner route is going to dust our linebacker and Adam Evans is only a sophomore, so I can't get that upset with him. We need Stevens to make the tackle here though, and we'll see how game changing that was from Kyle Stevens. They're still getting in, so it didn't make a difference. And I don't really want to pass here, but they were pressing our wide receivers, so I had to give it a shot, and Pat Smith misses the target. If it was man-to-man -man coverage, I believe we would have had a touchdown to Jeff Shelby, but it's all good because Ryan Wilson can get gains. And even without Demarcus Perkins, there's no reason for us to go away from the run because it works. It does especially well when we mix in the option. Luis Miller gets some, and I don't like seeing our fullback take handoffs, so we're going to have to pass on third down where Thomas Clemens is open, and he reeled it in. What a one-handed snag from the senior in the rain, and his story is incredible because he has been on this roster for so long, but he never got any real opportunities until this season, and I'm going to trust back
backup tight end Thomas Jones to actually catch versus Ball State, but he wasn't able to do that last week versus Michigan State. Pat Smith's going to keep this ball, and he rushed for at least 10. He is closing in on 100 rushing yards. He might be able to get it with this play if he gets the right blocks, and it's going to be fun to see how he develops over the next four seasons. Fred Anderson might get his first touchdown, and look at our third string freshman able to make some plays. I still don't see any reason to chase points, so we'll gladly take being up by 13, and this run should be boxed up. Come on, no way Matt Ferguson breaks that. Second and 11, another run, and they just hurtled over Joel Johnson, but we forced the fumble. It is picked up by our defensive tackle, and he's not going to return it all the way, but senior linebacker TJ Davis laid the hammer, and we've been put in a perfect position to take a three possession lead, but I read that hole wrong, so we should probably pass the ball, and that's when we're going over to senior Thomas Clemens, who gets to the two. I kind of want to let Pat Smith run in for his third rushing touchdown of the day, and our quarterback is dominant on the ground. We haven't seen any sacks out of Joel Johnson, but we really haven't needed them. We could have potentially gotten it on this play, and look at Jamal Davis locking up in this man-to-man -man coverage. I see no reason to switch things up, and we're rocking with it on third and short where they tried to run the ball. It's getting close to the point where we would put in the backups and just let them try and get experience, but I think the right move would be to pass it with Pat Smith because we still haven't seen that much of it, and he's a young quarterback, so he needs to get in as many reps as possible. Thomas Clemens is going to find the open space in the defense, and let's see who they stick with. They are going to let Pat Smith get his fourth. He might be our quarterback, but he just set a school record for rushing touchdowns, and why are the starters still in the game? This does not seem like a good idea. I don't want to risk any injuries, so we're going to put in our second team, and this is exciting because you get to see how all of these players develop. We're going to use them in the future, and that's not great coverage. We probably won't be able to run man-to-man -man with them, but that's going to be all right because I'm still confident in our ability to get stops on Ball State, but not there. The one player on this unit I want to point out is freshman strong safety Kyle Stevens, but he got held up on that one, and the reason I want to put focus on him is because he shot up eight overalls during the offseason, so he's somebody I never planned on using, but he will get some reps in the future. We are going for the goal line hold, but Matt Ferguson's going to pull it in, and we'll see if Ball State takes any timeouts, but I sure hope they don't. Why is Ryan Wilson still out there? I guess he's our backup, but it's time for Brian Johnson to take a snap, which is a knee. A few years ago, we thought he was the future of the program, but instead, it's this guy, Pat Smith. And can we talk about how impressive this stat line is from him, especially on the ground and also getting it to these receivers? Now, a ton of players are coming on a visit versus Ohio, and we might have a certain somebody back from injury, which would be nice because I want to have a chance at winning the MAC. And if this one goes well, we might be able to land all four of these players we're struggling to get. Obviously, the main focus is Zach Wilson, but the goals he wants us to achieve are hard. So we'll focus in on what Jordan Williams wants, which is only 100 rushing yards, and that should be cake versus one and two Ohio, but I'm pretty sure that they've won the MAC in back-to-back -back seasons, so we need to be worried about them. This quarterback was an All-American, and I can see why Jason McDaniel was. What about their running back? How good is he? He's breaking tackles, but that's pretty standard versus our defense, and on third and three, Steven Anderson got over there just in time. That's actually really impressive that we forced the Bobcats to a three and out. Ryan Wilson's going to take this return, and we have that left side of the field open if he can get around this one defender, which he was able to do to get to midfield, and I was hoping to see Demarcus Perkins out there, but it seems like he's not playing. So that's going to hurt our offense a little bit, but we should still be just fine. We didn't have issues with Ball State, but they are a much worse team, and they've gotten in pressure on this third and 17, so it's a miracle that Pat Smith was able to see the right side of the field was wide open, and the fact that I can actually escape the pocket whenever it collapses now is the best thing in the world. Beforehand, with Ryan Pace, you just knew that we were going to take the sack, but now things are different. Jeff Shelby's going to take this handoff. We're going to see if he has the speed to get there, but Thomas Clemens couldn't hold his block, so it's third down, and the halfback screen to Ryan Wilson, might go for a touchdown, he's going to have to dive, and it was a close call, but they gave it to him, so I'm not going to question it. Here's me doing the extra point with our 87 overall kicker, and look at our defensive unit, which is amazing. It makes me so happy to see them develop, but we have to continue what we started, and Trent Dunlap is fighting for every last yard. I'd assume they'd keep it on the ground, but they're actually going to pass here, and they're going for the deep shot on Jamal Davis. That's a terrible idea. He's coming away with the interception, and what a play. The junior corner is playing better than he ever has in his career. Ryan Wilson gets a bit. And this team is just getting me fired up with the way that they're performing right now. We have some really tough games on our schedule like Notre Dame and Michigan later in the year, alongside having to play all of our in-state rivals, of course. But maybe this could be the first time that we get double-digit wins with this team, and I hope that I'm not thinking too far ahead. I mean, Ohio was able to hold us there, but I'm so confident in our defense, I don't even care. This pins them inside the 20, and all we have to do is get one more interception, because that's what it's going to take to make those players want to commit on this visit week, and we got to bring down Dunlap. Somehow, we've got to get their quarterback to throw the ball again because that's when they made mistakes. Trent Dunlap is literally shredding us. He looks so good. I don't know what to do. Like he's one of those players that you can just tell is going to give you fits the entire time, but at least we were all over him on that one. And I'd assume that they're going to hand it off again, but it's the backup. So we shouldn't be as worried, except he's also good. There's got
got to be a reason why Ohio has made it to so many MAC championships. And I'm starting to see that even though we got off to such a good start, because now it's third and three and we have got to lock up, King's going to catch it and that's going to be fourth and inches. I don't know how we got that lucky of a spot, but they don't like it. And I'm run committing. They flipped the play. I knew it was coming. Come on, someone make the tackle. Are you kidding me? We literally had them locked up. Well, they're going to tie it up at seven to seven with this. And I got way too excited about how we opened up the game because now we are struggling versus them. I want to get the passing game going since our rushing attack just got stopped again. And on third and eight, it's not man-to-man -man coverage, but I'm going to have to try and fit it into that tight window where Jeff Shelby ran backwards. And all he had to do was make a possession catch, but you can't tell them to do that on this old game. Hopefully the punt goes our way though. And look at that bounce all the way to the 13. We know that the run is probably coming, but that's when they hit you with the play action and David Conception fell for it. He's also not going to make the tackle and we have got to make it with TJ Davis. Come on, buddy. Just get your legs there. Ohio has been awakened and this is not good news, but run committing worked there. So we're going to do it again and we're all over Dunlap. We're going to do it on the one yard line, but they hand it off to the fullback. And I think this is a good test for our team because we've yet to be in a situation like this where early on we don't have control of the game. And so far offensively, Pat Smith's been incredible. He has yet to have an incompletion, but sometimes you need a little bit more out of your quarterback. And if we can't pick up this third and one, that's going to be a problem, but he sees the open lane and that's a nice little run from him. What we need to do is find a way to get it to Dante Moss and that corner is all over him. But I like the routes on this play, even if there's some play action and it's going to beat man to man coverage. We got it out in time. Look at that run. After reeling in the catch, Dante Moss made sure that he got a lot of extra yards, but we still need to reach the end zone. And if this is man to man coverage, I'm going to Alan Brown who holds on. It's nice to see the sophomore tight end making plays like that. And a tie game at halftime is not bad at all. We have had so many bad teams that I should just be thankful for this. And we're also undefeated right now. So I cannot complain at all. I do want to see if Ryan Wilson can get a kick return going. He had a lot of success doing that in previous ones, but all that's going to happen is us coming back because of a penalty. And I love starting a critical drive on our own 11 yard line. I'm starting to miss Demarcus Perkins. They're pressing all of our receivers and I'm just throwing it up to Jeff Shelby who comes down with it. To be honest, I thought this route was going to beat the coverage, but he didn't. And then there was a safety over there. So the freshman is definitely catching my attention because he has speed and he also has height, which works out well. And I really like the halfback wheel route on this play if we have time to hit it, which we should, but it's a bad throw. I was afraid of taking a sack, so I didn't have a chance to set my feet with Pat Smith, but it should be fine. I trust us to pick up this third and two where they were not prepared for him to keep the ball and I'm surprised. One thing we've not done a good job of is getting our running back rushing yards in this game, but it's because Ryan Wilson hasn't broken off that much. And I'm also starting to love these corner routes to our tight end, but I'm not going to take it on this play. Instead, I'll find Arnie Hicks and let's just continue to move it down the field. Pat Smith is going to have to outrun this linebacker, but he is not going to do it. So it's third and inches where Ryan Wilson gets some perfect blocks to go to the three. This is so close to being a picture perfect start to the first half, but they were all over that run and man to man coverage cannot work against that route. We might go with two straight quarterback sneaks, but we don't even need to because Pat Smith fought his way in and they're literally in wildcat on us because they've dominated us by rushing. I would have never predicted that going into this game since their best player is their quarterback, but you know, Joel Johnson has to get a sack and it's nice to see him on the stat sheet on third and 17 man to man coverage was a bad idea. They might convert, but it's saying it's fourth and inches. So we're getting the ball back with Ryan Wilson on the return. And I haven't shown that many returns in previous videos, but I want to show more in this one at least because we all love senior Ryan Wilson. And he's another guy that we thought would be a stud for our program, but hasn't been that great. He makes for a great backup, but that's about it as he's going to go for two. And I want Pat Smith to make the read here on third down, which was the right move. Some of you all did want me to mix in more passing compared to last year, but I feel like we have a good offense that works even if we don't do it that much. But I'm going to let Pat Smith throw it back to back times. And what happened there? It felt like he had no time because of Randy Harris giving that up. And I know it says that he's a 79 overall, but the senior right guard does not play like it. And he's much better when it comes to run blocking. We're going to get four, making it a third manageable where the wide receiver screen to Thomas Clemens did not work. I've seen that go for touchdowns. So I thought we might have some luck with it, but I still think all is fine because we have a 10 point lead and they have to pass, which is going to be hard to do when we're getting sacks. And I want to put the pressure on their quarterback on this play. We've yet to send many blitzes, but that one paid off for us. And on third and 22, if we gave this up, I would be so upset. Joel Johnson almost got in for the sack. This could be our pick, but we didn't get the second interception and we've got the ball back up 10 with four minutes left. So I think we're going to improve to 4-0, but I want to impress the visiting recruits. And that means we need to rack up the rushing yards with our running backs. Ryan Wilson isn't in on this play, but freshman Fred Anderson is, and he got some great blocks here. He's starting to look a lot quicker and that's good. Maybe he just needed to get warmed up. Ryan Wilson goes nowhere, but we need like 15 more yards with our running backs. And that's a third of it. If Ryan Wilson could take this one to the house, he would hit our goal and he is going to have a chance to do it. So that's going to impress one of the visiting recruits a ton. And ever since Ohio scored those back-to-back
back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, they've not done well offensively. I don't know what happened to them, but I'm sure not going to complain about it. Joel Johnson almost got in some pressure. Steven Anderson could have had the interception, and it's like EA is teasing us because they know what we need, but I'm not sure we're going to get it. I couldn't get to that ball, and Ohio is going to get it back within 10 points, but to have a chance, they need to recover this onside kick, and they almost did. That ball smacked right off of the head of Dante Moss, and I don't know why it's been placed all the way back here. It went out of bounds at like R35, but it won't matter. Ryan Wilson's going to get the first down and a little bit more. He has started to come alive at the end of the game, which was much needed. We're also doing a lot better when it comes to getting blocks. Look at this speed from him. I love having him as a backup running back. Ohio's still taking timeouts like they have a chance, so we're going to keep running the football like this. But one more first down would seal it, and I don't want to risk players getting injured after this, so we're going to be respectful and get down on our knees. And that means that your Mastodons are still undefeated. I know that we have some tough matchups coming up, but it would be hard for us to play any better than we have recently, so I think we're prepared to go into some of these games, and we even have a bye week to rest up as well. All I'm going to say is these recruits took notice because we got them to commit even though they were in tight battles, and then we also got these two Jucos, with four-star Jordan Williams being the last player who's going to make for an excellent corner. As for the rest of our board, we're still going to struggle with this tackle and getting Zach Wilson, but we really need his 98 speed at running back, and I've put some points into other players on our board, but they're probably just going to be depth pieces for us, but they could always make the difference, and during the bye week, we landed athlete Michael Daughtery, who's going to be moved over to play on defense, so everything's trending upward, but our division is looking better than ever. Central Michigan's been good, but now they're a top 17 team, and our next four matchups are going to decide how our season goes. I don't know why our division is still improving this much, but Northern Illinois must have had an amazing offseason, because Lawrence McLaughlin's a 96 overall, but their starting quarterback broke his hand and he's out for a while, so we might be okay if Demarcus Perkins plays. I'm not sure why he's still on the injury report, but we need him out there on the field for this matchup, and we won't know if he is or not until we get the ball back after we hopefully get a stop. Lawrence McLaughlin has been the best running back in the MAC for multiple seasons now, which is scary, because I assumed he would just get drafted and go on to the NFL, but that didn't happen even with the dynasty tools. And he's had a crazy progression arc. They're not handing it off to him here, though, and their quarterback's gonna take the sack. So it's nice that sophomore backup Lamar Moore is out there instead of Kyle Moore, but they're gonna move the chains here, and we better not lose to a 69 overall quarterback. Their backup even looks like he's a great runner, but I think the refs are gonna bring it back, and that clipping call really helps us on first and 12. I probably gave up something deep over the middle, but he didn't see it, and I'm so committed to trying and stopping the run, which pays off when we get into the gap like that, but I'm terrified on third and seven of getting exposed, and I knew that we got burned. Luckily, the throw was a bit off target, though, so they're being forced to settle for a field goal, and there's no way their kicker hits from here. Now the moment of truth. Do we have Demarcus Perkins out there? And it's not. It is Ryan Wilson. I cannot believe that he's still injured. It said the sprained ankle would only be for two weeks, but that hasn't been the case, and Ryan Wilson and Pat Smith are going to have to carry this team, where I'm willing to run the ball three times if that's what's working, and if this play action doesn't work, you all are going to say it's a dumb idea to go with it, but I still put it out there and Smith doesn't get out. I want to get it going through the air, but that is a crazy blitz. Fred Anderson picked it up and Thomas Clemens catches the ball. Everything happened so quick, but I can't believe the freshman was able to pick that up. And in case he has a good offseason, we're going to let him take this handoff because he needs to get some experience. But on third and inches, it's got to be the quarterback keeper to Smith, and it hasn't been intentional, but we are milking this clock. Somehow it's already the end of the first quarter, and to start the second, Ryan Wilson just got blown up, which means we need a lot of yards on third and 18, and there's a route that I wanted to try, but they were all over it. The good news is Myron Cooper can hit from 50 yards out as that's down the middle, and it stinks that the kicker's a senior, because him being able to do that is such a difference maker. On first and 10, they're dumping it off to Hill, who gets like eight, and I've got nine players in the box if we need to stop the run, but they're just gonna pass it instead, which is not gonna work out in our favor. Anytime they hit us with a play action like that, they're probably gonna have success, but I wanna force them to pass it with their backup quarterback. I'm all over that with Steven Anderson, and we're gonna hit him. Lamar Moore is certainly no Lamar Jackson. Jackson on third and three. We gotta stop him. Are you serious? Sophomore Matt Small literally had him in his hands, but instead of hitting the quarterback hard, he let him break the tackle, and their drive stays alive. We better not lose to a 69 overall quarterback. That would be so upsetting, but having him in hasn't seemed to affect them that much so far, and they're 4-0, so they've probably won with him before, but I would just appreciate if we could stop the run, and we can. There's the first touchdown of the day from Lawrence McLaughlin, and I'm afraid that that won't be his last, but hopefully it is. Ryan Wilson gets like six here, and he's averaging like two yards per carry so I went away from the run, but that did not pan out. And let's see what the ref is saying the flag was. We just got bailed out here at home. And the only takeaway I have from that play is good things happen when we pass the ball. Ryan Wilson must have just broken a record though, and it seems like he has more career rushing yards than Perkins. So DeMarcus better get back from injury quick because he needs to take his record back. And what a throw. That was beautiful from Pat Smith, but we still have work to do. And to be honest, I'm just gonna stare down our tight end, Alan 
Brown, who thankfully got open, and that'll get us inside the 10-yard line. Now, the trick to finishing off this drive is taking some time before the half, because I don't want them to have a chance to score, and our slant is open to Jeff Shelby. Apparently, he didn't reach the end zone, though, so we had to go with the quarterback sneak with Pat Smith, and we also get ball to start the second half, which is really nice. Brian Wilson has been shut down, but we can still pass the ball. That one's going over to Thomas Clemens, and it's a shame that Dante Moss doesn't get that many looks with our offense, but we normally like to run it, and the only reason we're not right now is because it wasn't working. Accuracy-wise, I gotta say, Pat Smith has definitely exceeded the expectations that I had for him going into the year, and we've had a pretty solid drive so far. This needed to be pitched, but I guess Pat didn't want to risk turning it over. There should be space, but where did that guy come from? That is unfortunate, making it third and 11, where I know we're gonna have the drag, but Jeff Shelby's gonna have to make it to the marker, and it was risky to trust the freshman, but I'm glad that we did because we didn't have to force it into any tight windows, so we're just gonna keep taking what they give us, and it looks like they were ready for the option on this play, but I really like this route from Clemens on third down, and we'll see if they stick with him or the flat. We have to get it with Anderson, and he makes it there. I know it's been really slow, but I believe this is an awesome drive, because I'm watching our freshman quarterback play so simply, taking whatever they give us, and there it is, Thomas Clemens open in the end zone. That is exactly what you want to see, and that puts the pressure on their backup quarterback to make a play. Odds are they're not going to be able to run it the entire way down the field, and how did that ball get to that running back? I thought it was an incompletion. He must have been hiding or got stuck in one of the offensive linemen, but we're going to bring down Lawrence McLaughlin, and look at us rubbing it in by standing over him. Hopefully that doesn't make him play better, but I know that our linebacker is not going to stick with their tight end on the corner route. And Adam Evans isn't great in coverage yet, but he shouldn't be. He's only a sophomore, and Matt Small just got flattened by Lawrence, but we're still fine. We're up by 10, and it's the fourth quarter now, so they're going to have to start doing something quick. Their backup is going to scramble for the first, but Lamar Moore is still a player that I am not worried about our ability to stop. And when it comes to stopping their rushing attack, I believe that we've done a pretty solid job at stacking the box, which I'm sure has forced them to pass more than they'd like. And right here, we are going to make the tackle, which means it's fourth and six, but they think a good option is going for it and they're going to have a touchdown. I cannot believe that we just got lasered like that by a 69 overall quarterback, but that was pretty clutch from him. And we're going to run the speed option over to Anderson, who is in the game instead of Ryan Wilson. I find that to be a bit concerning, but you know what? He fought really hard to get yardage there. And the third stringer is starting to grow on me. Obviously, I missed Demarcus Perkins, but it's nice having other players make a difference out there. And so far, we've been flying down the field, but they were ready for that. So we're going to need to pass the ball on second and 13. And I know the drag's open, but will Dante Moss do anything? This is going to be tough, but I like the route on the left side of the field. And of course, they ran zone coverage. I also just realized there's only two and a half minutes left. And I don't know what happened to the clock, but we need Myron Cooper to step up big time for us. And it's in. The game stats say this has been a very even game, but I feel like we've played better than them and we deserve to get this result. So we just got to lock up. And I wish I kept a better eye on the clock, but the whole half went by so quickly. And that was a great sack, making it third and 13, where there's just hitch routes out there. There is no way that they get anything big here. And I don't know what they're going to do on fourth down. They have three timeouts, but they are opting to go for it, which would put us in field goal range. And are you serious? I tried to drop everybody back. I pass commit and all of that still doesn't matter. Lamar Moore scrambles for more, but we forced the fumble on him and they picked it up. Oh my gosh, I can already see it. We're going to lose this game off of something stupid. We need Joel Johnson to get a sack. What is taking him so long to generate pressure? And I'm just going to take over for him on this play, see if I can get in myself, but we didn't. Rodney Cronin got burnt by 85, and all of a sudden they are down on the goal line. We cannot let them reach the end zone. I feel like I made the right move by taking a timeout, but I got stuck on a defensive lineman, which is not good news. And yes, I'm very glad that I burned that timeout now. We have 42 seconds to get in field goal range, and let's see if Ryan Wilson can do anything here. He's going to hit him with the back juke, but it did not pay off. You know that we like those corner routes, so that's what we're going to be looking for, but those are locked up, and I am going to have to run with Pat Smith. Come on. It's a little concerning that I was spamming the slide button and he didn't go down, but it's going to be all right. And on second and one, they've gotten in instant pressure, but we're still able to evade the pocket and he's going to float the perfect pass to Shelby. You know, part of me wonders if he's really a freshman quarterback because he plays so well and we didn't even have to kick a field goal. That was the best drive that we've ever seen from a quarterback and I'm not even worried about the two point conversion. If the Huskies score in 15 seconds, us winning is simply not meant to be. And I just let Drew Flynn's ankles get destroyed by their tight end with that route, but it should be fine. There's just seven seconds left now. They're hiking it and I want to get in pressure on more, but we weren't able to. If we lose on this Hail Mary, I would be so upset. Their backup doesn't even get it out. So we improve to 5-0 and and Pat Smith might be the greatest player in history by the time his career is done. With how well he continues to play, I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. He makes everyone better and we're about to be tested versus number 17 Central Michigan. It's the opening week of the Michigan Mac rivalry and I have some big news for you all. You'll see Central Michigan's up to number 14 in the polls, but as I scroll down, we are going to be ranked for the very first time. And Demarcus Perkins has got 
lot to play in this game. By the way, our division's still going crazy as Buffalo is also in the top 25, and I'm so glad this rivalry matchup's at home. A lot of recruits like Aaron Adams want to visit, so we're going to schedule them, and let's see what happens in the other Michigan Mac rivalry first. We normally don't get to spectate these games, but I'm deciding to do it here because if Eastern could beat Western, that would be a massive deal. They could as well. They're on second and goal. Robert Davis is going to come up short, but they better make it into the end zone and not settle for three, which is exactly what they did, and that's great. Now Western Michigan's going to lose unless they can put together a touchdown drive in the next 40 seconds, and that was a good stiff arm, but they still have a lot of work to do, and we will see what happens. That's another check down, and Anthony Browning has got to do more than that. He almost got sacked there, but he was able to get the ball out in time, and I'm starting to get worried the Eastern's choking. In the span of 20 seconds, they've been able to get it down to their 30-yard line, and that could have been a house shot, but thankfully it was off target. If Western loses this, we're in good shape, and I think this is the final play of the game. There's almost no time left. This is definitely not going to the end zone, and look at that. One in four Eastern Michigan pulls off the upset on the road, and I like our odds of winning the Michigan Mac again, but only if we're able to beat Central Michigan, and at least it's a super nice day out, where I wish the construction on our new stands was finished, because it's a sold-out crowd, and that's not a good start. We're already jumping off sides, and I have zero control over those, so it's frustrating when stuff like that happens, but Mecky Jenkins is no longer in college, and that's good news for us, because he was always so difficult to stop, but we are going to give up a huge gain to Davis, and Davis cannot catch him. It's going to have to be Steven Anderson, who didn't make the tackle. That is not what you want to see, and I'm pretty sure I was supposed to be in his own there, but it's okay, because we have a good offense now, and where on earth is Demarcus Perkins? He is still dealing with his sprained ankle, and I just wanted him back for this game, because it is the biggest one in school history, but it's not going to happen. We're going to fumble it with Ryan Wilson, too. Central Michigan's getting so lucky. You can already tell the direction the game's going in, so I am sitting up. I am locked in, and don't tell me we got burn again. James Carter is a name you don't want to see. He always destroys us, and I thought he graduated last year, but David Conception can't keep up with him, so we find ourselves down 14-0 to so early on, and good catch from Dante. There were games where Ryan Pace had to just sling it constantly, and I'm afraid this might be Pat Smith's first, because we can try and mix in the run, but they're prepared for it like that, and we cannot afford to fall behind by any more points. I was hoping that was man-to-man -man coverage. Ryan Wilson literally just ran backwards, and it is third and ten, where if they're gonna guard everything, we're just gonna have to force it into a window and it's swatted down. The fact that they went zone twice in a row there really threw me off. I was hoping for man-to-man, -man and we would have had a first down to move the chains, but instead, they have it back, and I can guarantee that we are not gonna press them any more throughout this game. Blake Butler's still their quarterback, so he's probably their best player, and I'm all over that with Matt Small, but they're not gonna give us the interception, and let's just get this stop on third and nine. That was a wide receiver screen, but they went with the slant instead. I didn't even know the computer could do something like that to you. What is this play design with Blake Butler running up the middle? And I'm afraid that we have met our match this early on in the game. This is bad. Central Michigan was the program that we used to beat up on at the beginning of this dynasty, and now they're actually a competent program. At least it's third and nine, so I'm confident in our ability to get them off of the field. I couldn't get over there, and David Conception missed the tackle. I should have just let the computer do it, but I thought I could make the user play myself. Blake Butler's gonna take the sack, and that's how the first quarter is gonna end. Darren Wildcat, so I'm gonna run commit up the middle, and nobody was able to stop Ruffin. Matt Small can't make the tackle. They're up 21-0. to zero. This might be the worst start that we have ever had to a game, and I don't know why Central Michigan's this good. You can tell how frazzled I am with that last pass, and we have the corner out, but it's a miss. So right now, I feel like I'm experiencing Grand Rapids in Season 2. What is this possible performance? This is gonna either be the greatest comeback in school history or an embarrassment, and I'm hoping we can keep clamping up like that. Here on 2nd and 10, they're not gonna run it. They're going with the pass, and we did not generate pressure, but David Conception knocks it down, and it would have been nice to have the interception, but at least it's 3rd and 10 where we are gonna make the tackle. Alright, at least our defense is alive. Now we gotta get our offense going with Pat Smith. And last year, one of the issues in the games we went down in is we ran the ball too much, so I'm trying to avoid that here, but at the same time, we haven't had a chance to establish the run. No matter what happens on this 3rd and 3, I'm gonna go for it, and that's gonna be dropped by Arnie Hicks. So things could continue to get worse for us, and we have the drag route underneath the Thomas Clemens, but they marked him short. I don't know why he didn't just go over the marker. I was trying my hardest to get him over there, and they're about to break away for another long touchdown run. Okay, this is getting out of hand. I don't even have any words. The computer is outplaying me so hard right now, but we have got to put something together. There's Alan Brown over the middle, and I just refuse to believe that Central Michigan is this much better than us. Here on second and 10, it's press man-to-man -man coverage, and we had Dante Moss, but they were able to get to Pat Smith first. So it is third down and 18, and they sent another blitz in our direction. I just had to throw it away. This is crazy, and I burnt two timeouts trying to see if we could set up a fake punt play here. At least this one one's going to bounce very far, and I'm just going to run away from it. We know the run's coming, so we're going to run commit on them, and on second and six, they actually went with the pass, which worked in their favor.
favor. However, the refs are reviewing it and it seems like he got his foot in. I'm legitimately like questioning how bad I could possibly be at this game because even with the toughest sliders, it doesn't make sense that we're trailing by this much and giving up even more yardage to them. Their offense is playing perfectly. They're not making any mistakes. This should be a sack, but Blake Butler is somehow able to get out of there. And that fumble from Ryan Wilson ruined everything. We started the game on such a bad note and we just haven't been able to bounce back since then. But maybe something will go in our favor and we'll hold them to a field goal on this drive. That would be awesome. We just got to make the tackle in time and we do. I am calling a timeout. And you're kidding. They're going for it. They're not taking their points. We get the sack, but I don't understand this at all. They could have taken an even bigger lead on us, but they'd opted not to do so and they are guarding it perfectly. Oh my gosh. There's the first interception. We deserve it. The computer knew we weren't going to take something underneath and they're missing that pass. But you've seen so much hope get wiped off my face in a matter of seconds in this matchup against them. And let's see what they draw up on third and three. We're in man-to-man -man coverage, but we don't clamp. So they could very well get even more points before the half and we need an interception. I'm literally trying to drop players back so we don't give up a touchdown here. And on third and three, there's not that much time left. We'll see what happens. They're trying to scramble and Blake Butler is not going to make it. They're still going to get their field goal though. And what has happened to this team? They must have partied too hard after the win versus Northern Illinois because that's about the only thing that could explain this performance. And since when this season are we dropping easy catches like that? I don't understand why no one can do anything, but it is so frustrating. Thankfully, we get this first down. And I know that I have definitely had to have made mistakes for it to get to this point, but there's also been a lot of stuff that I can't control that has not gone our way. My entire brain is in hurry up mode because I want to believe that we still have a slight chance at coming back, but that's got to be delusional. Let's see what type of coverage they give us here. And I didn't take the right read. The second they start running zone, we struggle. And what are these blitzes? I have never seen the computer generate pressure this well. It is literally insane, but we have Anthony Weber open and I forgot about him since he didn't improve this off season, but that's going to be dropped. And I told you all, you could tell that nothing was going to go our way in this matchup, but that stings extra because it's a four possession game still and they're picking up the first down. I think it's been multiple seasons since we have played this terribly and you all aren't going to believe it, but the news for this game gets even worse. Pat Smith tore his pectoral, so he's out for a week and this level of collapse is going to be studied one day. It is absolutely ridiculous. They're about to get a lucky route bounce to get the first and it is hard to believe that we could bounce back after this. This has legitimately been the most draining thing in the world, just watching us struggle to make tackle after tackle and they are going to get caught, but not before getting all the way to the 10 yard line and let's just get the sack on Blake Butler. If they're able to reach the end zone, that would definitely put things out of reach, but if they don't, we can keep things within four possessions and they break that tackle, but we still stop them. They really don't care at this point, going for it down on the goal line and Blake Butler won't make it in, but I don't know why I'm acting excited because we're literally getting it on like the one yard line and Brian Johnson is out there on the field taking control of things. It is third and five and you can never go wrong with four verticals, but we missed the pass. And who cares about realism on fourth down? We might as well just go for it. Brian Johnson's going to scramble for the first. Look at that. Look at him getting this for us. Big gains. Now they're going with man-to-man -man coverage for the first time in forever. We can finally take advantage of it because any other time they've run it, they've sent a blitz that sacked us in 0.2 seconds and Brian Johnson's not fitting it into that window. It's kind of crazy for me to expect him to, but it sure would have been nice. Now we're going over to Brown. Look at that. The offense is starting to hum when there is no pressure because we're losing by so much. We have success. That would have been a touchdown, but it was underthrown so badly and please just hit your target. This is bad that I still think we even stand a chance at coming back, but I want Grand Rapids to fight till the final whistle and let's see if Ryan Wilson can catch on this two point conversion. I have to say that was impressive as we literally had no time at all and we're going into the fourth quarter down by 19, but we can play as aggressive as possible and Blake Butler keeps faking us out with that option run. I don't think it hurts to run commit. We have nothing to lose at this point and it worked, making it fourth and in inches. And it is time for round two of Brian Johnson just slinging it all over the field. If they give us a cover two look, I would try and take advantage of it, but it's man to man coverage. So that really doesn't help. And it's a good thing that Brian Johnson's a little bit quick. The read on this next one is threading it up the middle to tight end Allen Brown. And they gave him a ton of space, but we're still trailing by three possessions with four and a half minutes left. And it is bad that I'm starting to get a little bit of hope like we're actually about to come back. This play needs to go well for us and our tight end did not get open. That also didn't. And we will see if their man-to-man -man coverage can stick. Brian Johnson underthrows the corner route, but it's all good. We're still about to get into the end zone with Ryan Wilson. And I'm not sure if going for two even makes sense anymore, but that's what we're doing. We're going to roll out and it didn't work. Now I didn't go with the onside kick. And the reason for that is there's four minutes left. So I'm simply going to trust our defense to stop their rushing attack. And we just keep missing tackles and I'm not celebrating it, but we are sending the house at this backup quarterback where it's now third and three. 
three they are passing and they might go with the deep shot of course they had carter open i really thought that we were about to actually get a stop there and that's so embarrassing because we just gave up a big gain but what we've been able to learn from this is we got frazzled way too early on and we made it a respectable score but we also lost our starting quarterback at the same time he's injured and he's out for a week so i'm not excited about that and we just can't let them reach the end zone again just one more stop is all that we need and you know what we still have a lot of improving to do it was a rough start with a lot of drops and turnovers but brian johnson did well especially when it came to running and no one really was a standout receiver but seeing that l in the loss column really hurts and our schedule is not getting any easier buffalo's undefeated so they're ranked at number 18 and they actually have a pretty big win on the road at tennessee so i don't know what inspired our entire division to have great years but i'm gonna need them all to chill out the only positive out of that last week is we got three commits including kicker aaron adams but seeing pat smith on the injury report is very scary and i hope probable means that they're playing if we want to keep up with buffalo we're gonna need them especially since we have to play at their place and we are starting out on defense where they're running the option now there is one setting we need to adjust which i forgot about until the end of last week where you set the option defense to focus on qbs and i think that would have made a big difference against central michigan as you can see it did there they got 10 yards but their quarterback wasn't able to keep it and run forever on this third and inches we have got to generate some pressure though boys that's too much time i don't know what to do differently because we have 85 overall joel johnson and he's still not doing the trick either that's two stiff arms and why is football in the mac actually becoming good the second that we have a solid roster and could win the conference i mean we still can if we can beat buffalo and then they go out and take down central michigan but that's dependent upon whether or not we have our starting halfback and quarterback which we need and if we could have run versus central michigan i think that game could have gone differently for us it was a humbling experience but i would appreciate us stopping the run at some point and buffalo's done about whatever they've wanted to versus us so we have to respond back and i see smith out there is he handing it off to demarcus perkins he is all right we have the entire crew back and i am very happy with that so let's make sure that we still make the most of the rest of this year and are you serious they stopped us there i really want to call a fake pun but i said i would keep it realistic and i'm putting the balls to the wall our team is in desperate need of motivation to get them pumped up and getting this fourth down conversion shows that we're confident in them look at smith fighting and that is why you go for it in that situation we had to have something go our way if we wanted to lift our energy up to have some success perkins is now going for another first down and this is where things get good because we're right back to running the ball but buffalo was ready for it there and that's man-to-man -man coverage on thomas clements not gonna work if the central michigan game did anything it reinforced my confidence in being able to also throw the rock and let's finish off this offensive drive but ryan wilson is in and they knew that the run was coming so we have got to pass the ball instead and that kind of worked ernie hicks caught it and then he turned over to fall into the end zone so it's all tied up at seven and i think our team's gonna be just fine the rest of the year we gotta stop him on defense but we're slowly getting our confidence back and on second and four it's another run where drew flynn's gonna bring him down this is a big third and two and i send a blitz up the middle so we have held buffalo and if we can have a good offensive drive we are on track to take control of this one now coming back from injury i have to say perkins feels a bit slow but i'm sure that we've got to warm him up or something and he's starting to get quicker once he's fully healthy we are going to be firing away on all cylinders again look at that perfect pitch over to him and a great spin move so now things are going the way that we like and dante moss got open on that corner route to get us to about the 10 i'm not gonna lie to you boys i got like really down during that central michigan game when we went down a lot but i'm starting to feel a lot better about our team in this future and the move on third and 10 is hope that our tight end gets open on this corner route where the ball was knocked down i thought we might get it over the defender but even if we can't i'm perfectly fine with taking our three and aside from one rough half versus central michigan our defense has held it down this season so we can trust on them to get a stop here or maybe not george cunningham just broke through that gap and he is a quick running back he's very difficult to stop so we're honestly lucky that we even caught him there and that could be a big deal if they're not able to reach the end zone that would make all of the difference but unfortunately that didn't end up happening for us and we're back down by four points with two minutes left in the first half but there were some good blocks and we fumbled it again brian wilson is selling and if we didn't recover that i think i would have legitimately benched him after the last one that's two games in a row where he just can't hold on to the football and perkins can't stumble over there but some injury news popped up and it's ryan wilson being out for two quarters he must have gotten lit up really bad if that is why he fumbled the football and demarcus perkins is not reaching the marker but he has set a record and i think he's taking it back from ryan wilson i need to trust him to get us one yard on third and one and he's going to get a lot more than that so it is nice to lean on the rushing attack again and this wide receiver screen to dante moss could have gone for so much but the back chuke which was intended to help us try and go the distance to the end zone didn't pan out and you know what i'm just going to scramble out of bounds with him here because that way we don't have to burn a timeout for pat smith to get a little bit
bit of rest, and going with the drag to Ernie Hicks is a great move. However, Pat Smith is holding his knee, and injury-wise, we have been so unlucky this season, but we knew he was probably going to struggle playing injured, and wait, he's back out there on the field. I did not realize that he is tired. I wouldn't have taken off if we knew that, because I thought it was Brian Johnson, and we had some fresh legs, but that is a tight window to Clemens, and that is such an amazing way to end the first half. I really love having freshman Pat Smith, and I guess injuries don't affect him. Now we're starting the second half with the ball as well. Ernie Hicks is going to do the back juke like I was hoping we could have earlier on, and look at this return from Ernie Hicks. There's no Ryan Wilson in it is Ernie Hicks, and 82 is coming so close to catching him, but he is not able to do so, and what a turnaround this has been for this team. We have life after losing so badly, and we needed this so bad. I'm not kidding. I lost all of my confidence when we went down 28-0 to Central Michigan, but I think this team is actually legit, and we just had a bad week versus them. The fact that we're keeping up with the number 17 team in the country kind of proves it, and I hope they run on third and three because I was prepared for it, but they hit us with the halfback screen, and Goodwin made the tackle, but it was unfortunately just just a second too late, and now they're going over to George Cunningham, who's going to shed that one, which gets them 20. Now, we know that they're probably going to feed it to George Cunningham, and that's what they did, but there's good news as he's not getting up, and I sincerely hope he's okay for the rest of the year. We never want to root for a player to get injured, but we needed him out of this game, and who is number 20? Another white dude has just come in and replaced him like it was nothing, but it's all good. We still have a three-point lead, and Perkins has warmed up. I believe this is going to be the drive where we really get things going on the ground, but we need to convert on this third and three first, and Ernie Hicks is wide open. He also has a lot of space. We saw his speed on the kick return. He's going to juke that defender out. And it makes me wonder if we need to get him more touches, even if his overall is not the best. That's going to be a great route from Dante Moss. And look at that. We have again scored on Buffalo, but they're running with this backup. And I got to say, after that last touchdown, Frank Barnes scares me a bit. We've still gotten them to a third and two though. And that corner route was not open. We missed the tackle, but we had other players over there to make a difference. And Ernie Hicks is definitely our kick returner and punt returner for the rest of the year after he started the third quarter with that touchdown. Look at him going to midfield. And I feel like we are in full control versus the Bulls, which is something I didn't expect myself to say. Demarcus Perkins is getting out of there as well. We just need one more block, and that is what we get. Last week, our offense didn't exist, but this week we have Demarcus Perkins back, and that changed everything. If you were wondering how much of a difference he made, he is definitely proving it right now. And even when he's not touching the ball, the defense has to focus on stopping the run more. Oh gosh, we need to do the same thing. This is crazy. It's been a while since the teams run like this on us, but they've recruited some very quick guys and every time they get in open space, I'm very worried. It doesn't help that Buffalo's a run heavy team and all they're doing is feeding it to them, but Brad Jones gets the sack and I'm liking the progression that I'm seeing out of the sophomore because I'm pretty sure he had two of those versus Central Michigan and I guess this is technically not over yet. Buffalo could get it back within two possessions and they got that throw out to an open flat that gets them a few, but they still need another six yards and that's a bad play call. Third and nine now, I'm gonna try and bait them into an interception, but that's all covered up, and they're going to get it out in time for a touchdown. They're also not going with the onside kick, so that was not smart to be out there in onside recovery, but Ernie Hicks is still making something out of it anyway, and how is their clipping when nobody was back to block for us? Now, I've noticed how much time is left, so two clock is definitely going on in this situation versus them, because we need this top 25 win more than anything else, and if we can hold on, it gives us a chance at still winning the conference this season, which is awesome. Whenever Buffalo plays against Central Michigan, that's going to be circled on our calendar. Demarcus Perkins takes this handoff for six, and they're starting to burn time out, so it is so close to being over. But we need one more first down first, and that is going to be it. I wasn't sure if we made it there, but now we can take three straight quarterback knees, and Grand Rapids is back on track to having success. Ernie Hicks obviously won player of the game, but Pat Smith also had a pretty great stat line, and Demarcus Perkins rushed for over 100 yards, so everybody on our team played well offensively, and that's needed going into next week. We're facing Notre Dame who is ranked number six now, but in the playoff rankings, we're up to number 18 and number 19 in the AP poll. So I'm hoping we take down the Irish, whose only loss is on the road at number one Clemson. And I'm going to be keeping a close eye on these standings where there's already five bowl eligible teams in our division. Buffalo doesn't play Central Michigan until the end of the year though. So it's going to be all season before we know if we can make the MAC conference championship. And to even be considered for that, we still have to win our other three MAC games, but I'm confident that we'll be able to. And I'm not so confident versus Notre Dame. The Irish have a quarterback that's been tearing 
tearing the country apart, and we're on the road after not playing Notre Dame last season, but we've always managed to try and keep it close versus the Irish, so we'll see how they do today. Their play calling in the past has been pretty rough, but so far they seem to let Dustin Williams just sling the rock, and that's not good because he is in the Heisman race for a reason. Their running back just broke two tackles from our defense. Are you kidding me? That's another one. What is going on? I can already see the comments saying change up the slider and lower the tackling one, but I don't want to because you have to keep in mind we're a 75 overall team, and until we get a better defense with higher tackling and awareness, stuff like that should probably happen. I think it's fair to say that our roster isn't the best, so even the fact that we're sitting at 6-1 and one is a miracle in itself and Pat Smith's going nowhere. They were ready to stop the run, but we will see if they're ready to stop the pass and that motion threw them off. They left Jeff Shelby open. I'm so glad that Pat Smith was able to make that throw and have the vision to see it, so maybe we should let him sling the rock a little bit more since the run is getting stuffed and tight end Allen Brown is open. On third and one, I think our best option is the option to pick this up, but Notre Dame swarmed to it, so it's fourth and two. We have our drag and it's a bad throw. We should have just taken our three, but I knew you all in the comments would not have appreciated that if it made a difference in this game, and that aggressiveness is not going to pay off. What we need on this drive is our defense to just step up and not let Notre Dame pick anything up, but that's another drop pick from David, and I don't think he's caught a single one all year, which is incredibly embarrassing. Now they're going for the first, and I was about to say, they better not get that. Ernie Hicks back to return on this punt where that right side of the field is open, and it is very appealing, but he doesn't look quick, and it's kind of crazy that we're coming out passing on the first play instead of running the ball, but that's what's been working. I want to get Demarcus Perkins going, but they've been shooting the gap on him so well, and the triple option gives us a little more variance. Maybe that'll lead to a bigger gain. We're going to pitch it last second, and he also spun out that defender, but I think we need to have a playbook switch in the next episode because this one's getting kind of stale. I've been using it for like five seasons now, and I feel like I've seen every play in here, so I think we should do that. Let me know in the comments what you all think, but the fact that all Notre Dame left open there was our flats is very disappointing. Now we have the crossing route late, and it's going to be dropped. That's unfortunate, but our defense has gotten a stop, and this is a terrible punt. Robert Smith's had a lot of good ones, but every so often it's rough, and why was that not a fumble we could pick up? The game considered that as an incomplete pass, which is absolutely wild, and our schedule this season is by far the toughest one that we have ever had in school history. I think right now there's four ranked schools on it, with three of them being road games, and let's step up on third and one where we got up there, but they still convert. It's a struggle to get the Irish off of the field, but we had a zone over there, and the fact that their quarterback can place the ball like that is very scary. He also broke that tackle, but it was from freshman Kyle Stevens, so that was always expected, and here's our chance to shine on third down where Preston comes away with the football and the man coverage didn't work. We definitely need to find a way to score before the end of the first half, and I think it's crazy that we've been ranked twice this season. We could be a playoff team if we just won, which I didn't think would have any chance of happening before we won a MAC championship or two. Demarcus Perkins' vision on that one was absolutely incredible, and just when he was starting to get it going again, Ryan Wilson is in. So we've got to go back to passing the ball, and Jeff Shelby is open over the middle of the field. That's what you want to see, but after this play, we need to make sure that we turn on two clock unless Perkins gets in, and I really don't want to leave Notre Dame any time, but if we have a touchdown, we're going to have to take it. However, they just clamped us up, so now there's only about 30 seconds left, and it's man-to-man -man coverage, which means our tight end route will get open. Alan Brown's having a pretty good season for only being a sophomore, and I'm hoping that they just hand this ball off and take it to the half, but they're actually trying to score points on us. That means we need to clamp up on the Irish, and they're just going over to Ashley, so they can take that all day because that's not enough to get them into field goal range, and on first and 10, I have have man-to-man -man coverage out there, but that was not the right idea. However, there's nine seconds left in the half. They're going to take a little bit to hike the ball, and I'm hoping that we can force them into a turnover, but we didn't make a play on the ball there. They're going to stiff arm us, and no way they reach the end zone. Come on, someone just make a tackle. Please stop him short. We are good. That play took so long, it ended the first half, and we get ball to start the second with Ernie Hicks, who we could get a good kick return out of. There are some perfect blocks, and there's just one guy to beat. That's a great start to the third quarter, and now I'm going to find him immediately, but Pat Smith missed another easy throw, which is disappointing, and we're coming out in a wide receiver mid-screen, but I don't trust it's going to work, so we're going to audible. Let's have the slant out there, and there's Thomas Clemens, who drops the ball. I let that stuff really get to me when we played against Central Michigan, so I'm not going to let it get to me in this one today, but that's a bad pun, and I've just accepted that we have some rough spots on our team that we still need to improve. I mean, in all honesty, our wide receiver room should be better. I could say it was about the same in Season 2 or Season 3, and I'd say ever since that first batch of Juco wide receivers graduated, not much has changed. The overalls have been about the same. David Conception should have had that. And I don't know what's going on in his head whenever he's in coverage, but I'm going to consider moving him to safety in the offseason like one of the top comments suggested. Right now, we have a class of cornerbacks coming in that could play better than him. So he might slot in perfectly to senior Steven 
Anderson spot. And on this third and five, we did go with man-to-man -man coverage, but that means the corner route's probably gonna get open. I had an idea that was coming, so I should have covered it better. And they're flexing on us, but they actually can at this point. We're a solid program now that's on the ups with our stadium being under construction. And I cannot wait to see how it looks next year, but we have got to get this over to Dante Moss because I knew he was gonna get open there and that would take us to the 33. That was a good delivery from Pat Smith, but we need Demarcus Perkins to go. And they have been all over it when we try to run the football. They were even in that situation, but it won't matter because Pat Smith moves the chains and now we're going over to Thomas Clemens. That was a great one-handed catch. So it didn't matter that the throw was behind him and we didn't fake him out. All I wanna do is keep it within a one possession game, but they're getting in a blitz. So Pat Smith has to escape and he is able to find the end zone. If he's doing stuff like this as a freshman, imagine how he's gonna play as a senior. That's the type of stuff that gets me so excited for these future Grand Rapids episodes, but they are fitting it into a tight window to Burns. And Dustin Williams is just showing off at this point with the passes that he can make. How is Preston still standing? We had like four dudes trying to tackle him, but I guess that doesn't matter. And I'm sure they're going to run the ball here. So we were prepared for it where they're just going to stumble on over. That'll take us into the fourth quarter. And I'd love if we could get Notre Dame off of the field on this third and five, but they have a touchdown. I don't understand what the purpose of having zones out there is if they're not going to play it and make a difference, but there's still about five minutes left. So this game is not over. And Thomas Clemens has been doing well. The more we get into a rhythm passing, the more confident I am about our offense. Ernie Hicks gets this. And I'm starting to wonder if we should just let Pat Smith sling it next year, but he's going to fumble the ball. And I did not sense that pressure very well. I was staring down the two routes that I was waiting to get open and we have to try and go for the deep post, but it won't work. So it's not fun, but we should probably punt on fourth and 17, giving us our best chance at still being in this game. And the reason for that is because our odds of converting that weren't good. So we just need to get a three and out on them and their quarterback has kept it, but we're ready. Third and 16 now. We just can't get cooked with these routes and we're not going to. So that's why you punt the ball back to Notre Dame. And they ran the clock down as much as they could before getting it back to us, but I'm okay with that because we still have a chance. And it wouldn't have been worth it to burn one of our timeouts to save 30 seconds of game time. That's a nice little gain. So Pat Smith has us flying down the field and the halfback angle route gets us another eight. With time not being on our side, there's no way that they were going to expect us to run the ball on this one. And the clock just ticked under two minutes where I know that Perkins will get open late. So we're going to go to him for the touchdown. All we have to do is get one three and out. And I hope we're able to do that, but it is always a challenge to stop the run. I'm lining everybody up and run committing to do it though. So it's third and seven and I highly doubt that they're going to run now. They're passing on this down and of course he is open. I set a pink zone over there and I also pass commit, but it's not going to make the difference. I think they're about to take this to the house to seal it and we're going to let them get in. The reason for that is we could still score a touchdown and then recover the onside kick. They also missed the extra point, which is very interesting. Look at Ernie Hicks and I'm enjoying getting experience with Smith when it comes to passing the ball because he's having success, but it makes me wonder if we should be doing it more with him and we're going to Jeff Shelby, but that ball was floated too much. That was a disgusting throw to see in real time. I can't believe that we made it. And there's no reason to be testing a superstar corner. That should have been picked off, but Dante Moss finds the open space and he's going to take it to the crib. Now we just need the onside kick and I'm hoping we're able to get lucky. It bounces, Notre Dame recovers, and let's lay the hammer and see if that does anything. Well, we tried our best and I'm glad with our effort. And I don't think it's as tough to lose a game like this because we were always expected to do so. And my main concern is hopefully making the MAC championship, which is still possible. And so are the playoffs since we only dropped to 21. And it would be crazy if we were able to win out and then make it there. All right, now it's the following morning and it's starting to dawn on me how well we're playing, but we have to continue that today because I don't want to see this team lose to Eastern Michigan. And let's see how this first run goes where they're all over Pat Smith. I might've been able to risk pitching it, but I'm pretty sure they could have forced a fumble there. So we find ourselves on a third and short where Anthony Weber is going to make the catch, but they're saying it's fourth and inches and it wouldn't be realistic to go for it. They are about to block the punt. Thankfully, we got it off and they are not going to catch it on the bounce, which means it's going inside the 15. Robert Davis also became black during the off season, but not actually. So I have no idea who that guy was, but it was definitely not him. On second and eight, they're going to try and pass on our defense, but we had somebody over there. So they're not going to move the chains and we are shooting up the gap on Joe Small, but he broke free. Steven Anderson made such a fantastic play, but it's not going to matter and our zones are not covering East very well. David Conception isn't getting off of this block. This is going to go for a big game. Well, this is not a great start if Eastern Michigan can keep it up. I think we have zones covering all of that though. And Robert Davis is going to try and run on our defense, which worked out. So I don't know what else to do. And they're going to hand this off to Joe Small, who just trucked one of our corners. Jamal Davis should not be letting that happen to him. And here on third and seven, I know they're going to have to pass if they want to reach the end zone. And we have zones on that part of the field. It's nice to see us holding the Eagles because a touchdown would have been much more detrimental to our chance of winning and Ernie Hicks is 
gonna have the open space, but he couldn't get over there in time. And I'm hoping they don't force us to another three and out because that wouldn't be good. I'm not sure if running's gonna be our answer though, so we're gonna pass it. And Thomas Clemens was able to create separation on that cornerback, which gives me confidence to look back in his direction in the future. Demarcus Perkins almost got out of there and they're committed to stopping the run. But if we can get past that first layer, we're gonna do a ton of damage to them. So that's important to keep in mind. They've gone with man-to-man -man coverage on this first down. And I'm just gonna take what the defense gives us. Like in this situation, if they're gonna guard our higher up route, we'll go underneath to Ryan Wilson. And the final play of the third quarter is gonna be a read option where we get to the red zone, but we still need to pick up the third down. And Demarcus Perkins is the perfect player for this situation, moving the chains for us. And now Pat Smith is gonna keep it, which was probably the best option there. Thomas Clemens is open, but it won't matter. And I hope that we're able to figure things out on third down where we're going over top and they stuck with it. That was a beautifully placed throw, but this other cornerback decided to stick with that instead of the route he was guarding. And we went for it all, but that's not gonna work out in our favor. I went for all of the glory instead of using the curl route, which is definitely my fault. And I've got a blitz set up for this play, which is perfect since they handed it off, but I should probably just not click on and try and make a tackle with some of these guys because I took two players out of position and now Robert Davis is going nowhere. It was TJ Davis that brought him down. So we got some Davis on Davis action going on right now and Wildcat won't work. It's so easy to stop because I can just run commit whenever I see it. On third down, we're gonna make the tackle. And I was hoping that wouldn't be enough for them to get into field goal range but it just was. It was close, but the kick just squeezed through the bottom upright. And Ernie Hicks had a solid return to set up this drive, but they just sent the house at us. And the play automatically made me pump fake, so I couldn't get it out in time. But I noticed Anthony Weber was on a linebacker, and that's going to be a touchdown. The senior is starting to make an appearance for the team. And it's such a shame that he had some bad off seasons, but there's Wildcat again. And I'm telling you all, it is the easiest thing to stop in the world for us. But the run isn't. And on third and three, they're going with another one where we are not going to get off our blocks in time. We need our defense to step up at some point and all of those routes were put in a box. Drew Flynn makes the hit and I'm feeling pretty confident about our man coverage in these situations. I'm all over that with Cal Stevens. Drew Flynn again makes it. So it's third and four where we're going with man on one side of the field and zone on the other. They hit us with the halfback screen. Kyle Stevens is all over Joe Small and we're going to knock him down. That is what you want to see out of Grand Rapids and I think it's the right move to take a timeout before the half because we have a minute to still put more points up on the board and Ernie Hicks almost gave me a heart attack there but I guess it's going to be all right. And are you serious? They actually intercepted that. There's no reason for me not to challenge the catch and we'll see what the refs say, but the game always bails out our rivals. And to be completely honest, the ball didn't come close to touching the ground. So whoever advised Andrew Luck to throw the challenge flag there made the wrong decision. And that drop from Demarcus Perkins literally changes everything. Joel Johnson gets the sack, setting up a third and 14 where they're trying to run with Robert Davis again and it's not mattering. I am going to take a timeout because to be honest, I'm not sure if the kicker can hit from here and Ernie Hicks is going to catch it. Should we return it? We probably should have taken it on that side of the field. I don't like this look as much as I should have. And are we going to get the right blocks? No. In hindsight, that was the wrong decision there. And we can't even get the throw out. So we're going into the half up by four. And Eastern Michigan shouldn't really be in this game, but it's all right. We can still get some stops on defense or maybe not. Joe Small might take this hand off to the house if we can't make the tackle. And we have got to be careful. On this first and 10, they went to their check down, which Anthony Goodwin was all over. So they're just going to lose yardage. And Drew Flynn is so talented. Third and 13 now. Can we generate some pressure on Robert Davis? No, we can't. And instead of kicking the field goal, they're going for it. And I thought they'd run, but they passed and we couldn't get in in time. That Eastern Michigan offensive line must have had a good offseason, or they could have picked up the four and five stars that we couldn't recruit last season that didn't go to bigger schools. That's always a possibility. Robert Davis runs the football. And I feel like I've been putting quarterback spies out there, but evidently not. They're getting very close to reaching the end zone, which is concerning. And we're all over all of those routes. So at least he had nowhere to go. And we're about to send six in his direction, but he finds the open gap, which is not good. The computer is reacting to all of my moves and incredibly well, but Joel Johnson sacks him. So we have forced a fourth down and they have no choice but to kick a field goal. Our defense has been so clutch inside the red zone and we just got some amazing blocks. There's one guy to beat, but we can't. That was it right there. That was the touchdown we were looking for. And I have a deep post route, but they're going to intercept the ball. That's the first rough read that I've made in a long time. And I tried to pass lead it to the left side of the field, but the freshman was just off target. I've literally hit that exact route in so many other rebuilds. So I figured it would work, but we are playing on harder sliders compared to the others. And Pat Smith needs to be more careful with the football. Now Robert Davis keeps the read option and they're about to score again. The good thing is I'm confident in our ability to hold them to a field goal so they'd only go up by two. And every time we run zone coverage, I seem to regret it. Now they're hitting us with a halfback draw, which was really well executed. And this play action cannot get open, but Robert Davis stepped up. When it comes to stopping his rushing ability, I'm not sure what to do, but that is a huge missed third down throw. And why is the wide receiver screen so open? Cover two with a pass commit normally stops it, but they're gonna score. And let's just hope that they don't get the two point conversion, which they didn't. So I'm feeling all right. We're going to let Ernie Hicks get a good kickoff return again. He 
had good blocks on the last one and that spin move went to the wrong side of the field which caused him to get caught that's going to be the end of the third quarter and i feel like we haven't had the ball that much versus eastern michigan but i did not mean to combine two juke moves there and the blitz is not going to prevent dante moss from getting open i want to say we're better when we're passing the ball as of recently but we've also thrown two interceptions and it's important to note that pat smith and demarcus perkins are still on the injury sheet so even though they're out there on the field they've been in a recovery phase and that was almost picked that would have been extremely upsetting on third down it's cover two and we have somebody thank goodness jeff so he comes away with the football and he's going to spin to the end zone so the freshman wide receiver continues to impress and i trust him to get open on this slant which is what he did it's exciting when we finally get things going offensively like that that's a nice run though and we're relying on our defense to hold eastern michigan which could be a little concerning i want to say they're solid but they're also inconsistent and that was almost a sack but robert davis does such a great job of falling forward and i kind of ran into their wide receivers so they did deserve to have somebody get open there because a flag should have been thrown for pi and they just dusted our man coverage on every front that leaves us down by four with three and a half minutes remaining in this game nice little juke move from ernie hicks but ever since we started doing the spin i'm thinking it's a little more effective and demarcus perkins looks so explosive this is what we have needed forever it might have taken all game but i think we can finally lean on our running back who is going to get caught here and we'll try to get him more involved one more time but we're gonna have to pitch it last second and it's ryan wilson that's in the game instead third and 12 is not an ideal scenario but we're gonna have alan brown up the scene and i'm gonna make sure that the clock starts to tick down we are gonna get this one off to demarcus perkins but there weren't good blocks so his one solid run in this matchup might have been a fluke but he is able to get away from that defender and i don't think he's gonna take this to the crib but that's all right because it's gonna allow us to wind down more time and they've generated pressure but pat smith takes it in i almost slid but i wanted to take our points when we had them and this game is all in the hands of our defense we can win the michigan mac rivalry if we get the right result here we have just got to hold on no getting out of bounds for eastern michigan and they're already down to two timeouts now robert davis is going to look over the middle and it is intercepted by anthony goodwin that's going to be game junior robert davis is making freshman mistakes and this run from demarcus person will definitely do it i'm so glad that we held on because our third quarter performance kind of scared me and pat smith won player of the game again which might be a surprise with his two interceptions but only one of them was his fault and nobody else did anything that impressive but the most important things is these michigan max standings and i'm rooting so hard for western michigan but they have a tough matchup on the road at the number six team and i can't believe that central is this good on fourth down they're gonna hold the broncos and their undefeated season's gonna continue that means we can't win the michigan mac rivalry unless eastern somehow pulls off the upset and they've only won two games so i'm not expecting them to but they kept it close and i can't believe that they are punting on fourth and 15 instead of going for it but giving it back to central michigan down by 10 with this much time left is pretty much gonna seal their fate so it's another good result for central and they've officially won the michigan mac rivalry their final two games are against northern illinois and buffalo though so if they drop both of those we could still make the mac championship and right now we're sitting at number 17 in the polls so we have a real shot at the playoffs but we have to take care of business versus our biggest rivals and the war on route 131 is never a gimme this is one of the last times that we're going to play in front of so few fans and our stadium renovations have me excited all of those trees are going to be gone ernie hicks to open up the game is going to take this kickoff and go past the 30 yard line to the 35 so andrew luck likes what he sees but he's going to be a lot happier if we're able to score on this opening drive versus them and on second and two we're just giving it back to demarcus perkins where he is not the quickest right now but it's because he's still on the injury sheet and i don't know what he did to sprain his ankle this badly but there's no reason he should still be suffering from it we're going to get him warmed up though so that way whenever he does have some open lanes later on in the game he can take advantage of it and ryan wilson is in to take this counter where there is open grass on the right side of the field but he's not that quick and we'll just go with the drag route over to jones to get the first down junior tight end thomas jones has dropped so much i'm kind of surprised that he actually held on but that run went backward for us and i want to attempt to hit this deep post over to jeff shelby we're just gonna sling it and he is not gonna get to the football it was probably thrown a little bit too late but we need to at least get a field goal out of this drive and that's an inaccurate ball from pat smith so we're forced to attempt a 54 yarder with myron cooper and i didn't get full power which made all of the difference as it just hit off of the upright that's kind of crazy that we didn't get any points there especially because it seemed like we were going to but it's way too early on to get stressed over something like that and anthony goodwin can't make the tackle so someone else will our players still have a lot of developing to do to get their awareness and tackling stats up steven anderson gets over there and he's a senior so that's why he doesn't struggle as much on second down paris hill just cooked us and i'm sure that they're gonna run the ball we were ready for it but matt small did not make the tackle that is really rough it's hard to fill up those holes successfully and on first and ten we're gonna intercept it with matt small he makes up for his mistake where he baited the quarterback perfectly and anthony browning is going to regret that for a while second and seven and i didn't mean to throw it that quickly but i was just spamming the x button to hike the ball and that could have been really rough we're gonna have to hope that perkins reaches the marker but they have stopped 
stopped him short and that was a pretty ugly offensive drive we'll see how smith does when it comes to pinning them back it bounced before the returner could catch it but he still got over and that's taking them to the 40. it's almost like that interception from matt small was for nothing but we still held them and look at that sack with drew flynn being the answer for us and we are so fortunate to have somebody like him on our team but we're giving up a huge run and stopping that's our biggest weakness but now that they're in wildcat we should get over to them and matt small does make the tackle i was a little hesitant there because it took him a while to wrap him up but what's important is that he was able to and on third down we almost had it but their quarterback decided to keep it so anthony browning ended the first quarter the right way and we all know that they want to run the ball down in the red zone where this one could have gone backwards but nobody could get him in the backfield and he breaks the tackle that is not ideal but what's worse is the fact that we still have zero points and i don't want us to have any offensive struggles but that's just not avoidable having a freshman at the helm has definitely been a learning experience where it's now third and seven and it's man-to-man -man coverage all day which we're going to hit alan brown on that is what we needed including pat smith because up to that point he was three for six and now demarcus perkins catches the halfback screen to go for 20 so we've gotten things starting to go in our direction but ryan wilson took this handoff and he's not warmed up so that was not an explosive play from him but we will get to darney hicks making this a third and short where they did go with man-to-man -man coverage and we saw it on that left side of the field but jeff shelby dropped the football and i think we attempt the fake field goal everybody in this stadium knows that myron cooper can hit it but we have yet to run one of these this season and we're going over to ryan wilson so the drive stays alive and demarcus perkins takes this handoff to go for more that's going to be a face mask penalty as well on top of things and you can tell that the broncos are very frustrated we're so close to making it seven to seven and that's what we're going to do so things have swung in our favor and that's going to help joel johnson couldn't have guarded things any more perfectly but they're going to take the dump off to robertson who gets to the first down marker and that's frustrating to witness now the halfback screen's being pulled out of the books and nobody's going to make the tackle so they're going to get to midfield but part of that's on me because my pursuit angles have been atrocious and i feel like man-to-man -man coverage is our best bet but they're going to get some great blocks davis isn't going to bring down their quarterback and anthony browning keeps giving us fits i've got the quarterback spy out there and everything so whenever he takes off we're prepared but he's going to sling a dart and we cannot go down to western michigan we have got to figure out how to hold them they're going to go over in the flat after i went away from guarding him and then landrum just jumped off sides making it first and goal you gotta love stuff like that that you're not able to control anthony browning makes it in and we're not playing like the number 16 team in the country right now but dante moss is trying to do a little bit better we're out of this playbook again the only good routes are the corner routes so i think we need to switch things up what's crazy is pat smith did not struggle with missing throws early on but as he gets more experience things seem to get worse and let's hope that alan brown is able to reach the marker there's only 48 seconds left in the half so we have no choice but to sling it and pat smith is going to roll out on the run and find dante moss who is going to reach the end zone but we might have scored a little bit too quickly because we left western michigan 40 seconds and i hope that they just take it to the half the stats show that we've outplayed them but the score does not with it being all tied up and i'm over that with drew flynn they're just going to richardson but because they got out of bounds they're still striving for points and what are you doing jamal davis please make the tackle on pearson okay matt small this is your time to shine i don't understand why he was so out of position there but maybe we can bait them into throwing a pick and on second and 10 i'm taking over with joel johnson but that's when they go with the run that's gonna put them in hurry up mode though as they have to hike it very quickly and they have so much time back there joel johnson's gonna make the sack and thank goodness that they're only going to get a field goal but it's gonna miss to the left i cannot believe that they shanked that but that just fired our team up going into the second half and everyone's getting destroyed with these blocks their running back is still not marked as down and he gets them the first i like to see them in five wide because it's a passing formation but they go with the jet sweep run instead on our defense and i feel like stopping run heavy teams is our worst nightmare with them matt small almost got out there how did he miss this is a huge third and two but drew flynn gets in there and what a shot from the junior linebacker that was a personal hit on the western michigan running back so he must have stolen his girl or something ernie hicks did a nice little back juke and he's also going to fake out those defenders can he take this all the way there's one guy to beat so he's going to get caught up unfortunately and that blitz was so quick they were prepared to send the house at pat smith and there's not really a purpose to run the ball now but the worst news is he's not out there on the field because he didn't get up after that play so we went with the halfback screen because brian johnson's in and he's not warmed up so now we just have to punt it back to them hopefully this can bounce inside the 20 and it does it actually got all the way down to the five and i am waiting to hear what is wrong with pat smith but mcdonald breaks that tackle and their mascots literally dancing on us there is always drama in the war on route 131 and that man-to-man -man coverage could not stick but that's probably because i've been running it way too much recently so we're going to switch it up with some zone and that's why you mix things up on them if you want to have success versus the computer you've got to keep them guessing but they had a great play call on that one and i feel like they should have gotten more out of it but now it's third and seven and we should get over to robinson which we do that is a huge defensive hold and the real question will be where is pat smith is he going to come out onto the field after this punt return i'm hoping so it takes us to the 45 
45. And that is not him handing the ball off to Demarcus Perkins. So we are not back in business yet because he's out with a hit pointer for the rest of the game. And we've got to finish it off with the junior who doesn't have that much experience, but he looks all right. I mean, he's got a lot to prove since we've decided to start a freshman over him and he thought that this was his team. So I'm hoping that can factor in and help us seal a win over Western Michigan. Demarcus Perkins gets a nice big run against their defense and surely we can get five more yards with the read option, which is what we're going to do. Brian Johnson has taken over, but it's not the end of the world. And it's so nice to have a serviceable backup because I'm not sure how much longer our defense can keep us in this game. They're bound to give up more points. And this is probably the final play of the third quarter where they've decided to pass and David Conception gets his first interception of the season. Look at that. Maybe they can bail us out. And seeing the junior develop has been nice, but I still think I'm going to look at putting him at safety. But that's a later decision to be made in the offseason. And I really want to keep it on the ground where this handoff goes for four. But now we have no choice but to pass the ball and it's deflected at the line. We had the first down wide open and that's upsetting, but we're still going to pin them back with Smith because I know this is a good punt and it bounced perfectly. Let's get back to it and let it roll for as long as possible. They're going to be passing on this first and 10 where they're just going underneath the McMillan who only got them a yard or two. And now it's time to mix in man coverage because we ran zone on the last one where everything is completely clamped up. David Conception should have had that interception, but at the end of the day, it's going to be okay because they are punting the ball back to us and Ernie Hicks did not get blocks. Hopefully this time around, we have a better chance at establishing the run against them with Demarcus Perkins. And with Brian Johnson in, we're still able to run the option, which is going to get us a few more, but he is holding his chest and not getting up. So junior Kurt Butler is out there on third down and he's just going to hand it off to Demarcus Perkins. We have got to turn on two clock. I cannot believe that we're down to our third stringer. It is all on Demarcus to finish it. And I think we'll be okay as long as we're in field goal range, but this would be a really long attempt for Myron Cooper and Demarcus Perkins isn't going anywhere. We need the senior to step up more than ever and he has drilled that one far enough. So as long as our defense doesn't play too badly, we should end up being okay and that could have been a pick. They threw it straight to two zones and I love that they have to waste downs by spiking the ball to keep the drive alive because that helps us. They did just move the chains, but I think we're going to be all right because we're going to get the sack and after spiking it, it is third and 18. Drew Flynn's going to be all over Neil. So they better have a good fourth down play drawn up and it's just four verticals, but we have players that are over to that ball. This was a team effort all around deserving this win over our rivals and I love getting the right result in the war on route 131. This will be the final run, leaving one play for Kurt Butler to take a knee. Grand Rapids is now eight and two and Demarcus Perkins one player of the game, which makes sense when you look at our offensive stats because nobody else stood out like him. And these are the final Michigan Mac rivalry standings. So there's no weird tiebreakers this year, but we need Central to lose. And on paper, Northern Illinois is better, but their quarterback is still out with a broken hand. And I can't believe the Huskies are eight and two with a backup. If he's playing, I don't see them beating Central Michigan. And that's so annoying because they've clinched a spot in the conference championship since they have the tiebreaker over us head to head, which means no matter what happens in this game, we can't win our division. But if we're able to win out, I think we're going to have a playoff spot and Michigan's had a couple rough losses. Well, at least one versus Purdue, while our only two have been against top six teams. So I like how things are set up for us, but they have a five-star recruit visiting. And I'm telling you, these Mac schools have been recruiting like crazy. I don't get why either, because normally in Sim, they just get worse. But it's scary because going forward, our division could be really good. And you all are going to hate me for attempting this play, but I want to try and bomb them over the top to Shelby where it's off target. Pat Smith had him there, but now it is third and 13, and we're going to have to take this crossing route over to Thomas Clemens, keeping our opening drive versus Toledo alive. And now with the run, they're going to focus in on him, but they still stop Demarcus Perkins in his tracks, and they're all over him on the next one. That means we should probably just keep it with Pat Smith and see what he can do. That's going to go for at least a first down. And because Ryan Wilson's in the game, we'll go back to passing the ball. But let's see if they expect the run where we hand it off to him, and he's going to get to the two or the one or the end zone. The backup running back just kept on going. And this is how you open up a game versus Toledo, but their running back looks good. If Eric Spencer is that explosive on every run, we could be in trouble. And yes, he is. This is going to be a very long day. There's so many different reasons why we can't let them beat us, mainly because we want to get a playoff spot. But also if the five-star quarterback has a good visit week, we're going to have to face him for the next four years because he could commit. And Jason Wilson's a problem right now as he's going to throw one defender off of him. And can we just bring him down? They have no need to complete a pass because they're able to run so easily on us and I cannot stand facing off against these scrambling quarterbacks. Third and six. Of course they're going to pass in this situation and are you serious? He just thread the needle perfectly to the back of the end zone and none of our players over there even attempted to grab that football. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing right now but they went with man-to-man -man coverage and I had to attempt the deep shot on 43 where Jeff Shelby just couldn't hang on. Man the freshman has had some good moments this season but that is frustrating to see. At least he makes up for it on the next play and it is so obvious that this one's going to turn into a shootout. So we've got to have success on 
every drive that we can, and our tight end's corner route is going to be open. But Pat Smith can't hook up with him, making it third and nine, where we need Allen Brown to fight, and they're saying it's fourth and one. But this is a reasonable one to go for, with Luis Miller, our fullback, on the dive. I am glad we could keep the chains moving, and Pat Smith gets this one out to Thomas Clemens in time, but he wasn't able to break free, and I could have sworn that we had the touchdown there, but I guess it's going to be all right. We're still playing very well offensively, and hopefully we're able to reach the end zone where that blitz was just not quick enough. I like what I'm seeing from Pat Smith so far, but what about our defense? We can't let them continue to run all over us, but that's what they're doing again. And I'm going to try and shoot in this gap, but they pitch it last second to Eric Spencer, who is not going down with that tackle either. Man, we are not doing good when it comes to holding them on the run, and they're going to throw it right at our zone. Testing freshman corner Matt Hill, and that's a good hit. I'm not sure if I like that we're taunting Jason Wilson, because he is going to probably just destroy our defense after seeing that. But maybe not. It is now third and 11. Nothing can get open over the middle of the field, and we get the sack. Now, this is a 54-yard attempt, so I would have been very surprised if that went in, and their kicker had no care for any accuracy. He just hit it as hard as he possibly could. We got that one out in time, but I would rather pass the ball, so we're going to hit him with the play action, and that was quick enough to get it over to Dante Moss. I'm really surprised that Pat Smith got away with that, but that was an instant sack, and I think we all know that senior right guard Randy Harris just took the playoff. I'm actually excited for him to graduate to see who replaces him, and Pat Smith's going to get 11 back, putting us in field goal range and making it third and four where you can't guard Allen Brown, who just ran a drag route. They had to focus on some of our other wide receivers, and Ryan Wilson is going to take this for nine, but that's perfect that he didn't get a first down because it allows us to take even more time off of the clock, and you best believe this is going to be the final drive of the first half unless Perkins somehow manages to get in, but I just made a bit of a mistake. I still had two clock on, so I called a timeout really quick, but there's only seven seconds left, and Clemens gets us into the end zone. It's actually not going to matter, but I thought I just screwed us over, and I'm just glad I got a timeout off before the time ran out in the half. Now, they get ball to start the third quarter, which is a little bit concerning with their rushing attack playing like this, but we're already up by two possessions and our offense has shown no signs of slowing down. And this stat will probably shock you, but they've run the ball 13 times on us while only having to pass it three times. They've just controlled it on the ground and we should start run committing, but I didn't even have to on that play and this one we're all over. We know this is far out of their kicker's range as well, so they're going to have to go for the first down, but that's not happening. And I can't believe that they've sent him out there onto the field where this one is actually going to get very close, but it doinking off of the upright is so sweet and Demarcus Perkins takes the counter run for at least 20 yards. Toledo is 7-3, and three, so they are one of the better schools in the MAC, but I think we're simply outplaying them. Look at that move from him. And I know Demarcus Perkins hasn't been as good as he was last year, but it's unfortunate he's a senior. I need to check back in on recruiting to see how we're doing with Zach Wilson, though, because if we land him, things will be fine. And look at that comeback route to Dante Moss being open. Pat Smith is 12 for 15, so he's been having a very good day. And let's see if the freshman can throw it for a touchdown where he has everybody open. But I was afraid of the QB spy picking off the ball, and we're just going to scramble with him on this down before slinging it over the Shelby. This is exactly how we have to be performing before we go in and take on Michigan playing this well. So I'm very excited to see how that one goes, and we're stopping Wilson on this run, I think at least. If he is still up, that's ridiculous. Are you serious? Somebody bring him down. Oh my gosh, there is no way that he takes this to the house. Please tell me Hill is able to catch him. I feel like I just had an aneurysm commentating that, and I'd be a lot more upset if we were in a close game with them, but it doesn't matter now because we're up by so much and they're not going away from the run, but I can't blame them. Even their backup looks good. What we need out of this drive is just a long one that goes down the field and gets a field goal at least because from there we could successfully just wrap things up, but they've already gotten us to a third and five where the hitch route is not open, so we went with the post, but Pat Smith didn't get it out in time, and that was the exact opposite of what we needed to happen. Their return is even over to the ball, but it hits off of his helmet. It is loose and we get it. That is some amazing news and luck that we deserved. We need to get a win in this game. 66 makes the block. Demarcus Perkins takes this and he is going to the crib. To make things even better, Eric Spencer just popped up on the injury report and he's out with a concussion for the game. So Toledo is cooked. It's all over and I'm blaming their kick returner for that. They had so much momentum before that moment, but mistakes happen. Joel Johnson gets another sack and it's popping up this type of screen. So I'm assuming that he just set a school record getting 12 this this year, and I'm not gonna lie, his pacing definitely slowed down after that fantastic start to the season, but it's all good. We're gonna hold them on third down, and if they're punting us the ball back at this point, they've given up. I think it would probably be best if we just put in the backup since next on our schedule is Michigan, and I don't wanna go into that game with anybody missing because of injury, but that means we're using quarterback Carl Butler because Brian Johnson is hurt, and let's see what Ryan Wilson can do with the halfback toss where he's gonna get very close to the marker. Third and one should be an easy down for us to just move the chains, and that's what we're gonna do. So there's not much to see at the end 
end, but freshman halfback Fred Anderson is going to get a handoff, and he was only in for one play before being replaced again, but that went nowhere, so we're going to have to see what Butler can do when it comes to throwing the rock, and he found Ryan Wilson to get the chains moving, and look at this play from him. That could have been intercepted for a pick six, but it's a good thing that it wasn't, and we're as ready as we're ever going to be for the Michigan game, going into it sitting at 9-2, and two, and Pat Smith performed really well, going 13 for 17 for three touchdowns while Demarcus Perkins had one himself, and to make things better, we get a bye, where during it, Central Michigan actually lost, which dropped them to number nine, but even though Buffalo beat them by one, they still have the tiebreaker. So unfortunately, they'll be playing Akron in the conference championship, and look at the difference in divisions. My main concern is beating Michigan, though, because if we do that, we're going to be in the college football playoffs. They're down here at number 19, and one last thing before we hop into this, which is just a final update on where the recruiting board sits going into the offseason, where we're in a tight battle for Jerry Dahl and Zach Wilson. Last year, we actually took down the Wolverines, but we have to remember that their starting quarterback was out, so our expectations can't be that high because Ingram did win them a national championship and he is already scrambling for yardage. It's also at the big house, which doesn't help us, but we almost picked it, and we could force a three and out on Michigan, assuming that they don't pick this up, but we just got dusted by Burnett on that corner route, and that's probably the last time that you're going to see man-to-man -man coverage out of us today because it's not going to work. I'm not sure if zone's going to be that much better, but we're hoping that it is. We should get a sack on Ingram, and this is weird. Michigan has not handed the ball off yet. They just continue to try and throw on us, where we've now made it third and seven. We just have to stick with that drag route consistently, and I couldn't get to both players. I knew that would eventually get open, and relying on Joel Johnson to generate pressure was not good enough for us. He is going to get a sack, though, so it's nice to see him add on another one, and surely they're eventually going to hand the ball off, but again, it's a pass, and that's going to go for a touchdown. A healthy Peter Ingram is very scary, but they're reviewing if this was a catch or not, and his foot was definitely inbound. If any run plays worked for us this season, it's been halfback stretch, but Michigan was all over it, so we're going to pass already, and this one going over to Dante's dropped. We got off to a slow start versus Central Michigan, and we cannot let the same thing happen today, so Jeff Shelby's got to catch it, and that is so frustrating to see. They also almost blocked the punt, and they're not going to catch the ball. Look at that. Their returner got scared, thankfully. If they want to run up the score, we're going to make them work for it, and Brad Jones is going to have an opportunity to get the sack on this one, but we just struggled to bring down Ingram, and they've actually gone with a run where he just got multiple good blocks. This is not good. Joel Johnson should not be the player trying to catch him, and I hope this is Peter Ingram's last season at Michigan. Let's hit Morris, making it second and five, where Robbie Woods is actually going to have an opportunity to break off a run, and he did decent. Then Terrence Landrum jumped too early, and that's like the fifth time it's happened this season. I can't do anything about it. They get a first and five, where Peter Ingram is showing that he deserves to win the Heisman, and our offense needs to get it going. I'm afraid it's going to be almost impossible to get stops, but they were in the backfield to stop that run, and their man coverage is all over us. That was a terrible first quarter, and I have no idea how we're going to pick up this third and 27. Maybe we'll just throw up a 50-50 ball to Allen Brown, considered an arm punt, which is exactly what it turned into being. This is going no differently than the Central Michigan one, and their running back, Robbie Woods, just ran through Steven Anderson like he didn't exist. He literally phased through him, and that's another touchdown. I cannot believe it is 21-0 already. I thought we had a chance going into the big house against the Wolverines, but their defense has been lethal. And let's see what type of look we can get on first and 10, where I wanted to go with the deep post, but obviously that was never going to be open, and their man coverage was all over all of those routes until the end. Third and 24, we're going to roll out with Pat Smith to our money play and hope he floats it on the money to Dante Moss. But now that we've done that, it's right back to trying to establish the run. And on second and eight, I hit him with the option, but they were fully ready for it. I feel like this is four down territory because if we don't get points on this drive, it's all over. We need to get the right block so Thomas Clemens can get the first. But even though he's short, I have faith where Smith keeps it and Pat Smith is going to move the chains. We needed that so bad and apparently Thomas Clemens got injured a couple plays ago, but I'm going to keep him out there. And on second and eight, we know that we're not going to have much time back here, so we just got to get it out, and Jeff Shelby held on. This game might have been a lot differently if he could have done that in the first quarter, and where's that going? It was meant to be a bullet pass, but at least it wasn't floated into an interception. And this is tough because it looks like they're going to send a blitz with that look. We're just going to try and fit it into that window where it is dropped. We had the right idea, but it got to Thomas Clemens just a second late, and I see no reason not to go for it on fourth and nine because no matter what, we need to get into the end zone, but that's pass interference. That is pass interference. The game normally throws a flag whenever you get contact with players, so I was hoping they would do it in this situation, but that didn't happen, and I've just collapsed against the two biggest opponents on our schedule. It's weird that we've struggled that much with Michigan and Central Michigan, because against Notre Dame, I felt like we kept it really close, and I can't believe how much of a difference it makes to have a starting quarterback in over the backup. We were literally able to win this matchup last year, and I'm just waiting for them to try to throw the drag. We should get the sack on Peter Ingram, but he's going to scramble for the first, and he has kept the drive alive for them. We did go with man-to-man -man coverage. Hopefully, that can get the stop where we 
have an interception, but it clicks me on to a player that wasn't anywhere near the ball, and they're about to get another first down, plus a little more. And they fumbled. Wait, 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 wait. They fumbled. We picked it up. Hang on, hang on. This is a big deal. The refs are reviewing it, though, and I'm hoping his knee wasn't down, but it's going to be a very close call. And in the end, it's going back to Michigan. For a split second, I had some hope because I thought we forced the turnover on them, but instead, it's about to be 28 to 0 as they're so close to reaching the end zone. And I don't even know what to say. It's 28 to 0. We did get a nice little block on this side of the field, but we have struggled. And I'm sure when I watch it back, I will see what the issue was, but I can't tell right now. That's why we review film, though, because there's something that has gone wrong versus both. Michigan and Central Michigan for us to start out down by this much and Pat Smith is running for his life trying his hardest to get us on the board and that was a beautiful route over there by Shelby but it's just gonna bobble out of his hands. I'm not sure we can trust Jeff at this rate and we're gonna go over to Demarcus Perkins who has been struggling in this one and finally it seems as if things are starting to work for our offense but we have to finish it off and that corner route's gonna do it. This is better than it was against Central Michigan because at least going into the half we've been able to get onto the board and let's just stop Peter Ingram on the final play. I think we get ball to start the third quarter so things could be worse. If we have another good drive, we could get it back within two possessions. And I'm not sure if I want to figure out how to run the ball because I know we're going to struggle, but it would be so nice. And on third and eight, it is man-to-man -man coverage on that side of the field where we need Thomas Clemens to create some separation, which he really didn't do a great job of, but it ended up being okay. And our flat over to Demarcus Perkins is open on the next one where he's going to spin for seven, which at least solidifies that we can move the ball a little bit on Michigan. But every yard is hard to achieve and we got to get the first down with Pat Smith. For the next few plays. Ryan Wilson is out there on the field, so we're going to have to sling the rock, and that was almost caught. But we probably shouldn't be testing Michigan's man coverage like that. It clamped us up, and hopefully I am able to make the right read on this play where we're going to roll out, throw the corner route, and it's off target. To be honest, I think mixing in this motion could really help us because that always seems to get open on the drag route to Dante, but he wasn't able to hang on to the ball with a catch here, and Michigan has it with a three possession lead, but I have done man coverage for the first time in a long time, which I'm going to give credit for getting the stop on that play, and zone's not doing it. That's why on third and six, we're back to man-to-man -man coverage, and I saw him get open on that side of the field, and then they tried to test TJ Davis, who just knocked it down. That is the first incompletion of the day for Peter Ingram. Up to that point, he was 11 for 11, and if we could have just had a catch to end that last drive, it would have stayed alive. So my confidence in our offense is back, and Thomas Clemens just got open. Hopefully, he can get by this one player, and he can't. It's all good, though, because I have another play in mind where it's designed for Pat Smith to roll out, find Jeff Shelby, and that's going to take us inside the 10-yard line. I wish our offense could have started the day like this because it looks a lot better. That's going to go out of bounds. And even if Demarcus Perkins caught it, it would have been a flag. So we have to go for the curl route, but Branch picked it off. I tried to pass lead that to the ground, but it didn't make a difference. And it should have been a laser to the bottom right corner of the end zone, but it wasn't. And they're converting on second down. It's going to be hard looking back on the film of this and seeing all of the mistakes that we ended up making. But I think our team improved a lot this season because we have never won nine games up to this point. Peter Ingram's taken off and oh gosh, this could get bad. I shouldn't have clicked onto those players. Come on, Steven Anderson, bring him down. Come on, some Somebody make the tackle. Oh my gosh. It is 35 to 7 right now. And the playoffs were literally on the line. We actually picked up that blitz decently well. And if I'm being honest, I threw that corner out, assuming it would get open. Michigan stopping it too. We lowballed that one and it's picked. There is no way that he caught that. I'm gonna challenge the catch and they better overturn it. I couldn't even see from my angle, but there's no way it didn't hit the ground. And it actually didn't. The physics on the ball just changed right here into his hands. Well, Pat Smith's season stats probably looked pretty good before he threw four interceptions today. And for development, purposes, the next drive, we're simply going to run the ball and see if we can make any bit of a difference. We're past the point of having a chance at coming back, and all we have to look forward to is our bowl game, where we're hopefully going to get an opponent that we can take down. That's going for another first. And it's only season six, so we should still be struggling versus the Wolverines, but I figured it would be a little bit closer, and I'm hoping we can get the interception, which we do with Drew Flynn. Wait, 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 don't hurdle. Please take this back to the house. And there we go. That is a huge play from our junior linebacker, but I forgot that I wanted to run Run on this drive and Pat Smith keeps the read option, but that block just got blown up. I think what made us win last year was we were able to control the tempo against them, but this season we didn't do a good job of that. And on fourth and six, the corner route over Talon Brown got open, but they miraculously managed to warp over to him and knock out this football. And it's probably a good thing that we didn't make the college football playoffs because we would have gotten destroyed. These high overall teams still give us a ton of issues on all sides of the ball. And here on first and goal, it's going to be handed off for another touchdown. I've seen enough. I'm turning on two clock to Marcus Perkins. Perkins just got blown up, and it turns out that Michigan wanted to make a statement against us with this game after we beat them last year, because they're having no mercy, and on third and eight, we're going over to Allen Brown, but again, he drops the ball, and I would prefer if they just decided to run out the clock, so it's nice to see that two clock is on in this situation, and I knew they'd go to the outside. You all asked to see every last play, so you're getting to witness this whole blowout, and the final snap
snap of the game is going to go over to Sanders where Steven Anderson didn't make the tackle, which is great. That is great. Nothing better than them getting an extra touchdown versus us. And next year, I want to host this matchup in our own stadium. By then, it's going to be upgraded. And I'm sure Pat Smith will do better than throwing for four interceptions because that's the worst stat line we have seen the freshman put up, which drops us down to number 21 in the polls, which is still really high. I mean, the fact that our division was this good this season says a lot because the Mac is starting to get put on the map as the sixth best conference and a USC quarterback won the Heisman while we got the quick lane bowl versus Nebraska. But I forgot to see who won the Mac championship and it was Central Michigan. That should be no surprise with this running back going for almost 300 yards and apparently he's their backup so we're gonna have to deal with him for multiple seasons. At least Pat Smith looked really good with four of his interceptions coming in that final game and he also led the team in rushing touchdowns while Demarcus Perkins let everybody down. It's hard to say a lot of good things about our season stats when they look like this and I'm gonna be so glad to see Randy Harris graduate but now let's cover our defense where Drew Flynn led the team in tackles and you already know that Joel Johnson had the most sacks with 14 while interceptions wise I think it was Jamal Davis that led the team. I feel like Joel Johnson deserved to win an award because he led the country in sacks but the only player that was in the running for an award was our punter Robert Smith. As for the playoffs I want to see how Central Michigan does and their opening round matchup is against Miami which hilariously enough is taking place in Hard Rock Stadium so the Hurricanes had home field advantage and they doubled Central Michigan's score putting them out which at least makes me feel a little bit better. Miami would actually go on to make the national championship but in order to win they have to beat Georgia and the Bulldogs come into it as the higher seed so I'm not surprised that with 30 seconds left they have a lead but Miami's trying to come back and we'll see what they draw up on this fourth and three if they don't pick it up the game's over but they're going with the deep shot and it's going to be caught. This could be a crazy ending to the championship if they'd spike it but instead they're going to take a false start penalty and that moves them back five yards. They only have 13 seconds left it's thrown away so they still have a chance. Ben Noble drops back and I'm not sure if he's going to have anything open. That is picked off which means Georgia's won the national championship and even six years into the future they're still dominating but all we have left in our season is playing Nebraska and then the off season, which is super exciting. The Cornhuskers could be a team we play again in the future and we need to start mixing up our out of conference schedule so comment some other teams down below that we should start playing. This is the first play and Demarcus Perkins looked really slow there but on the second one we're going to go over to Jeff Shelby and look at that speed from the freshman wide receiver he just made up for all the drops he's had this season and that is how you start a bowl game versus Nebraska. After this game ends I'm hoping training results go well for him in the offseason and he improves a ton because he's on pace to be our number two wide receiver behind Dante Moss and on second and 11 they're hitting us with play action. We'll see if any of these routes break open but their quarterback just scrambled. I hope they go with a run because I was prepared for it but instead they're going with the pass and that's a bad throw so we have forced a stop and this could be the first season that we ever get 10 wins with Grand Rapids. We're off to that good start that we were looking for. Nebraska's got good defense on the kick return though. And passing is what's worked for us recently, but I want to get Demarcus Perkins going because it's his final college game and he did so much for us last season. This is going to be a good run from Pat Smith and hopefully we can land Zach Wilson in the offseason with his 98 speed. We clearly need a running back that has a little bit more against some of these tougher programs. And let's keep it on the ground here where Fred Johnson somehow didn't lose any yards. He probably should have in that situation, which is what made it so impressive. And on third and one, there's an option play for Pat Smith, but he doesn't get the first. And I don't care. We are going to go for it. This would be a long field goal to hit and look at Shelby getting open again. He's already over 100 receiving yards and it's not even the end of the first quarter. So what a start from the freshman. We're just going to hand this one off to Perkins and he couldn't get inside. Third and goal now. We will see if that hitch route gets open to Ernie Hicks. And he ran backwards out of the end zone. But I feel like we can punch it in. Ryan Wilson's in the game though and that's not going to matter. Demarcus Perkins has been dealing with a lot of injuries, but it's his last college game ever. So I don't care to keep him out on the field and he's not going on to the NFL. So it's not like he's missing out on any draft stock. This is a good run from the Cornhuskers going for 20, but they're playing some of their backups. And my hope in this game is we can play some of our backups as well, just after we've already gotten up by like 28. To start the second quarter, they committed a false start. So that moved them backwards five yards. And now Will High is trying to make his way out of the pocket where he successfully got some of it back, but it's still third down. And that's a great catch. Things could have been much worse. So we're very lucky that he just fell over. And this has been a solid drive from Nebraska. We'll see if they have anything on second and 10 and they do. Now they're going to hand it off and I was ready for that all day. So I'd expect them to switch it up on second and nine with some play action and it's off target. Third and long. It's a halfback screen. We are going to get over to Hall and he is going out of bounds. So all the Cornhuskers are getting is three points and we're going back to the option where Pat Smith keeps it for nothing. But that's better than turning the ball over. Now a little bit of play action and that's a great block pickup from Demarcus Perkins. I didn't know he could do it. But if I did, I probably would have run some more play action plays this year since they always have some really good routes on them. This is a nice run. And let's hit him with the option where Pat Smith keeps it and that defensive tackle gets to him. I figured he could make him miss, but that simply wasn't the case. Again, some really good block pickups there and we're
We're going for the deep post, but it didn't get open. So now it is third and long where our slant over to Thomas Clemens is dropped. We got off to a really good start, but we might not run away with this bowl game. Nebraska is going to have a chance to get it back within a possession. And I didn't mean to pick up the ball in that position. I bet we could have gotten it to bounce for a few more yards. Drew Flynn is not able to bring down 47, but a swarm of Mastodon players got over to him anyway. And on first and 10, we are just going to lock everything up, but it will not matter. I need to start focusing on tackling stats whenever I'm recruiting players and hit power would probably be nice as well, but it is third and six and that was going to always get open. However, Will High missed the throw and they have to punt the ball back to us, which is great because then we can go up 21 to three before the half. That's my goal. Get a touchdown in one minute on Nebraska and I trust Pat Smith to sling it, but in order to successfully do so, he needs to hook up with Jeff Shelby and they're all over him on this play. So we had to go to Allen Brown. Now we have a corner route out there on the field, but we threw it immediately and I figured it would work since it was open, but it didn't. So we're just going to have to take the drag to Dante. I'd love if we could pull off some deep shots with this team, but I don't want to take any risks and I hit the wrong button. That is such a bad mistake to make. Pat Smith does not want to put away Nebraska. Evidently, he wants it to be close, but their offense is making our defense look really good and we should have gotten the sack there, but they stumbled over. I figured they might be in a rush to hike the ball and they kind of were on third down. Davis is over on McLean, but he doesn't make a play and they are getting closer to the red zone, but they still have a lot of work to do. We should just bring him down, letting Joel Johnson get another sack and he immediately has to take off now. What's interesting is there's seven seconds left and they're going for the touchdown, but they get in and the aggressive play is going to make it a four point game at the half unless Ernie Hicks can pull off the miracle here and he had one guy to beat. Let's just say we should be winning this by at least two possessions right now, but instead we can't pull away versus their backup offense and backup defense, which is embarrassing. And the only reason it's that way is because they have so many players that are already in the transfer portal, but there's some good news as the refs are hitting them with clipping, which makes it second and 18 and I'm guarding all of that while their quarterback decides to run. I don't know why, but it seems like the computer doesn't like to sit in the pocket and make a read. And sometimes it's really hard to stop while other times we're able to hold them. Ernie Hicks on the punt return is going to hopefully get to at least midfield. But even if he doesn't make it there, we need to go back to running the ball. And this is a great handoff to Demarcus Perkins where he is going to get around that defender, but not beat 40. Now we're hitting him with another one. I will go straight back to him. If he's going to have success, I want to see it. And whenever we start to throw the ball a lot, we make a ton of different mistakes. So it's better off this way anyway. And Wilson's getting lit up. I'm willing to bet that Shelby gets open on this corner route though. And the block did not pick up. So there was zero opportunity to roll out and we could try and force it into this window to Ernie Hicks, but he's going to be marked short of the goal line. And you know what? It's bowl season. So we'll go for it on fourth down where we roll out and that didn't go where it was supposed to, but Jeff Shelby still held on and this handoff to Rice is going to get them at least 10 or 15 yards. He's fighting for more. I kind of want to switch up our defensive look as well and see how this 3-3-5 does when it comes to generating pressure, because right now we don't have a formation that's a staple of our program and just running coach suggestions can only get you so far, but we have the ball back up by 11 and this could be the drive that seals the game as they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, but they can't keep up with Thomas Jones. To be honest, I'm surprised he held onto it because we've seen him have drop issues in the past and these blitzes are not giving us any issues. Ryan Wilson, the senior, is going to get out of there with one guy to beat. And it's a shame that nobody could pick up a block for him, but it's all good. I'm going to turn on Chew Clock and just go to work at the fourth quarter clock. And even if we can't move the chains, we're at least going to go up by two possessions, but that's a good throw to Dante. And I'm impressed that he was able to come away with that along with this one. This might be Myron Cooper's last ever kick for us and not having the senior could definitely hurt us. We'll see if High is able to scramble for any yardage, but he didn't. And on second and seven, Booker's coming underneath on a drag. I should have stuck with that route because we all know that's where the computer's most likely going whenever they pass. And I've stuck down there, which allowed Joel Johnson to get a sack. And next year, he might be going for an NCAA record because he generates so much pressure. I think to beat Derek Thomas's all-time record, he's going to need 52 of them. And that's in his career. But right now he has 37 of them and the other Johnson gets one too. That's defensive tackle Brad Johnson. And I'm pretty sure he's a senior, so he'll now be on the team. But this has been some fantastic defense as of recently. And on third and 20, I couldn't stick with both of those routes, unfortunately. Nebraska's trying their hardest to come back. It's really not going to matter. They're still down by 18 points against us. And I'm surprised they're not going with the run, but they're going with the pass instead. And we were so close to getting over to that ball and we just pushed them outside, holding them on the two point conversion. Let's go ahead, recover this onside kick and seal our win. Fantastic catch from Dante Moss. And I don't think we're getting this snap off in time. That's an embarrassing way to get a delay of game, which could cost us because we still have to get a first down since they have three timeouts left. And we'll give Demarcus Perkins one more handoff, but that'll probably be the last one in his career. And they have sent in a blitz at Pat Smith where he is going to try and evade the pressure, but he doesn't go anywhere. That leaves a minute left on the clock for the Cornhuskers to try and score two touchdowns. It's still not likely they come back, but I don't like the fact that they have any hope in this one. And we need Joel Johnson to generate pressure, but he got held up there. I want him to rack up the sats and break an NCAA record, but he's going to need a lot more of them still. And they're going to pick up the 
this first. So they're going to have another snap and we have Joel Johnson almost getting pressure and in time, but it won't matter. On this play, I'm going to control him and see if I can make the difference, which I can. And hang on, that was good. If we could make that work over and over, we might have a strategy going in the next season, but that time I could not do it successfully. And what's happening? This is kind of crazy, but I called a timeout because I want to get one more sack with Joel Johnson and he missed. So the junior couldn't come up clutch there, but we're still able to celebrate this bowl win. And that's our second one in school history. Senior Demarcus Perkins obviously set a school record and he also had the rushing touchdown in a career one while Joel Johnson broke his own with 17 sacks this season. When it came to players leaving, I'm glad he didn't declare for the NFL draft, but we're losing guys like senior kicker Myron Cooper, Demarcus Perkins, whose stats were half of what they were last year, Thomas Clemens, who never got a chance to start until this season, and right guard Randy Harris, who gave up 15 sacks in his career. There's also career backup Ryan Wilson, who had his worst season as a senior, and Brad Johnson, Steven Anderson, Justin Johnson, TJ Davis, Anthony Weber. I mean, the names just continue to go on. We had to say bye to our first recruiting class ever, but I do have some good news as we have a new offensive coordinator that's a level 25. Josh Henson, who used to be USC's offensive coordinator, is now with us, and some of these boosts to our stats are going absolutely crazy, like this plus two speed. That'll help our offseason training results, but we have to go all in on Zach Wilson, and I understand that I'm practically conceding on everybody else, but I don't think we have a choice. His 98 speed is game-changing, and on signing day, he's the only player that committed to our team. This class wasn't that big, which is why it's ranked 45th, but it's the first time we could get some four stars, and I think it's our best one yet because some of the higher overall players aren't Jucos like they normally have been in the past. Well, this has been a surprise to me, but I went to put him at halfback, and he's a 69 overall, but at wide receiver, he's an 82, so we're gonna need another answer at running back, and that won't be Michael Daughtery, who's a 76 free safety. The only issue is I want to move David Conception over to free safety, and he'd start over him, but I'm gonna do it anyway. An athlete, Jordan Williams, is gonna replace him as a cornerback, but he can also play halfback, so I think he's gonna play on both sides of the ball, which is needed because this running back room is depleted, and I think I'm also gonna put senior wide receiver Ernie Hicks over there just so we have some depth. Now it's time for the training results, which could be game-changing, and when I say some of these numbers are crazy, I mean it. No wonder some of our rivals have been improving so much. That's a plus nine, and you all wanted me to show more details on how players improve, so Pat Smith is up by four overalls, and his throw accuracy went up by seven. These are the stats of our sophomore quarterback, and at running back, we have to talk about 266-pound Josh Hartman. He's a converted fullback, but he has 93 trucking, and I have no idea how this is going to pan out because I don't think he has the best spin move or juke move, but I'm excited, and Jeff Shelby didn't improve much. There's also been a ton of separation in our tight end room, and I'm just going to go over to cut players, where I need to get rid of three useless players, and one of them is Joseph Kent. It's always hard to pull some scholarships, but the walk-ons are much easier to get rid of, and our division going into next season is insane. I do want to take one final look at our roster, though, like I said I would, that is a lot more in depth, and we already know how the quarterback and running back situation is, with 85 overall junior fullback Luis Miller also being in the mix, and then at wide receiver, we have two new starters in Zach Wilson and Juco Justin Stevenson. We've also already seen tight ends, so now I'm just going to scroll through the offensive line, where you're going to see some of these players have developed since we've recruited them a ton. And then there's Joel Johnson, who's obviously the best player on our defensive line by a lot. And it would seem as if true freshman Jay Green's going to start at outside linebacker unless we wanted to put true freshman Dion Hughes over there and Anthony Goodwin's a 75. Now the cornerback room where our top three guys are all new faces. And then we should probably redshirt Michael Daugherty while David Conception finishes out his last year. But this strong safety group is so elite. Sophomore Kyle Stevens has jumped up to an 83 and he's stolen the starting job from Matt Small while Aaron Adams is our new freshman kicker and Robert Smith is our punter. I don't know what season seven has in store, but I know our stadium construction is finished and I will see you all in the next episode.